Point Raceway, Sonoma, California for 29 years, a showcase of American road racing. Two and a half miles of asphalt winding through the California wine country hills. The fans are connoisseurs. They've cheered the great drivers of America's great road racing series. But never have we had this big a crowd, and you know what? They came for a stock car race. look the same as any other race day. The colorfully painted weapons of Winston Cup War, but under the skin, they are purpose-built to turn left and right for the twists of road racing. Hello, everyone. I'm Dave Despain. We're NASCAR today. Behind us, opening ceremonies, a preliminary to the Safe Mart Supermarkets 300. That's kind of what we are. We're the warm-up act, the pre-race show. It's like when you go to a snooty restaurant, you buy a nice bottle of wine, they bring it out, pop the cork, let you smell it, pour a little in the glass, swirl it around, sip it, make sure it pleases the palate. Make sure before the main course that you got the good stuff. Well, we got the good stuff, and we got the good guys to tell you about it. Well, the Spain knows all about those expensive wines, so let me tell you about the main course. Here, it includes the proper ingredients of a great transmission, the proper pit strategy, the right gear, and a pinch of patience. Who's the best chef at Sears Point on this Sunday? Well, we'll duck into the kitchen and find out. At Sears Point Raceway, they say there's 12 corners, but there's three eights. That makes 15. Very, very difficult to pass. Later, we'll show you the best places. Well, Benny, how about a nice hot fudge Sunday for dessert? One driver's already tasted sweet success this year. That's Rusty Wallace. He won at Richmond. But what about Mark Martin? He's been eating rice cakes for 42 races. Can he win today at Sears Point? We'll find out. And I'm not about to tell you how much Fruit of the Vine those guys have enjoyed but it may have been a record. I will tell you this, at risk of re uh, mixing metaphors, road racing is special because it's rare. In that same vein, we visit a lot of racetracks, ovals of different sizes and shapes, but all Rarely do we get the opportunity to show you Winston Cup road racing. An ESPN road racing show includes scenes rarely witnessed. This, for example, is the only opportunity the Cup drivers have to turn right. Well, let me rephrase that. It is almost the only opportunity the drivers have to turn right. As Parsons will tell us, stock car racing puts a premium on passing. A timely exercise of driver aggression sometimes pays track position dividends. Road racing encourages the drivers to slide the car around a little, though if they slide a little too much, road racers pay a finish position penalty. The occasional road racing mishaps, eh, they tend to be a little unusual. They give us awkward moments and sometimes a different look at a Winston Cup car. And there you go. Check this out. Road racers actually shift gears. And don't you love all that fancy footwork, the heel and toe tap dance, the pedal ballet? We never see that stuff at the roundy round races. In other words, you should stick around. You're going to see something special, something rare. 300 kilometers of position swap and tire sliding, car crashing, gear jam and tap dance and Winston Cup action. We call it the Save Mart Supermarkets 300. And that last picture tells a bit of a story because when we go road racing, a few guys like Rusty Wallace, the defending champion, emerge as the favorites. Show me that uh, top 15 in qualifying and some more names will emerge. Mark Martin, of course, took three-tenths of a second off the track record here. He's a three-time road race winner. Rusty alongside Gordon Labonte, teammates, consistent top fives on the road races. Bodine won the Glenn Dollin back the Trans Am champ Ricky Rudd with five career road racing victories. And right here beside me, the pole sitter, Mark Martin, who will tell us how he learned to be such a good road racer because he'd never done this before he got to Winston Cup. How'd you learn to do this? Oh, I grew up in Arkansas driving on the country roads as a teenager. It's the same thing. You go as fast as you can and stay out of the ditch. <laughs> you took the outside pole. I don't understand that. You got your choice and you're going to be on the outside going into the first turn. How come? I think that, I thought that's where everybody took. Uh, you know, I want to be on. Uh, I want to be on the inside on the critical turn at the top of the hill. Uh, being on the outside, going up the the, the first left hander is not a problem. Being on the inside on that right hander up tops, that's the key. He's got this all figured out. You lead every lap, or do you save the car? 
You lead every lap and save the car. That, yeah. That's the idea. I don't know if we can do that. Or There's not. the guy right there. He's got to figure it out. Have a good run today. Thank you, Mark Martin. I'll tell you what, it's going to be a great show, and we got it all for you here on ESPN2 for the free race and ESPN Classic for the big show. The NASCAR Today menu for Sears Point. A hot lap with Ricky Rudd, as always. We'll talk to the drivers going for the win. We've got Benny's Blueprint, Ray's Garage. It's all coming up. Stay with us. NASCAR Today is brought to you by new Slick 50 Synchron Fuel System Treatment, the 5,000-mile performance. Tell you what, this place sure looks a lot different. Bruce Smith running the show now, moving a lot of dirt, better sight lines for the spectators and for the drivers and for the TV viewers. Maybe somebody new will see their way to Victory Lane. Check out this graphic, and it tells a bit of a story. When he won last year here, Rusty Wallace broke a tie for tops all time in road racing. Let's go to Bill Weber. Well, for a long time, it looked like Rusty Wallace was going to have the pole here. You do start on the front row. Are you doing some course design here with Bruton Smith? What's going no, on? No, we're just talking about the people, man. I've never seen so many people in my life. There must be 170,000 people here. It's really great. And uh, I've never seen a crowd so large. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger. But the, we're talking about how the how pretty a day it is. It's just awesome. So my car is running good. And I'm excited about my chances today. And uh, just got to have good pit stops and drive smart, and I think we'll have a good day. So you answered all my questions. So are these people going to see you repeat and go to Victory Lane again? God, I hope so. I mean, they're, they're parked everywhere. It's amazing. I mean, I, we've got airplanes flying over. It's a really cool day today. <laughs> okay, well, have a great run. All right, thank you. Hey, that's Rusty Wallace. He starts on the front row next to Mark. Yeah, they parked that baby five minutes into happy hour. They're pretty good. One of my favorite things here, foot cam. And my favorite foot cam operator beyond all doubt is Ricky Rudd. I'll tell you what, he can tap dance his way around this place. Let's take a fast lap at Sears Point. Tide crew put a huge amount of time into that. So did NASCAR. Want him to know we appreciate it. I disagree with his assessment. I think he was the perfect guy for the job. I, on the other hand, can't walk and chew gum at the same time. I think we should get to a guy who had a little stumble of his own this weekend here at Sears Point. Let's go to Ray Dunlap. Well, he sure did, Dave. On Friday afternoon, Bobby Labonte went hard into the tire berries over in turn six. You have the backup car now. This is actually a race car that you would run at Watkins Glen. You're starting 29th. But back at Atlanta, you did the same thing and finished fourth. Can you do that today? Well, it's a really good race car. The whole interstate crew, they do a great job preparing these things. And uh, unfortunately, the, the better car was probably the one Friday. And this one here is, is really good, but uh, it's not set up for this place as good as the other car was. So, you know, we'll just have to take it easy, uh, figure it out, and work on it throughout the day. And, and I mean, hopefully we'll just work our, work our way to the front and time ourselves for 
uh, consistent and uh, patient and just kind of hang out and be there at the end. I mean, that's, that's the key. That's what we want to do and make sure we come home with all four fenders on this thing. Today is 74 laps around this racetrack. You're back in the pack and you're going to go back up through that turn again. Does that ever come into your mind what happened on Friday? Uh, no, I've started further back than this before here, so, I mean, this ain't nothing new for me. This is about my best starting spot, really, to be honest with you, so. No, I mean, it's, it's just, uh, it's just unfortunate that I did that on Friday, and, uh, you know, I gotta, I gotta come back today and hopefully, uh, make up for that one. Well, Bobby is fourth in the points right now, looking for a great run today here at Sears Point. Today we road race the stock cars at Sears Point at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. They run the open wheel cars in big, fast circles. We got it all for you on the deuce. We'll start our live Indy reports daily on ESPN2, Monday, 5 to 7 Eastern Time. When we come back, we've got Benny's blueprint and a whole lot more. It's all part of NASCAR today. Stay with us. Outrageous estimates of the expected crowd today. I can tell you it is going to be huge. And you know what? Every person here came to see one guy, Brett Bodine. Go, Bill. Well, Brett Bodine had a great qualifying run. You start fifth here, but your race car may not be quite as good as your qualifying car. Yeah, we're just not real happy with it. Uh, the car's been pushing real bad, and uh, you know, we've made some changes this morning. Uh, we did gain on it a little bit in the last practice happy hour, but uh, we're not as quick as them guys starting in front of me. Uh, I really didn't expect to be. Uh, those guys really got their act together. Hopefully we can come out here with a good solid run, though. This team getting stronger and stronger, showing more uh, more signs of improvement. Obviously, your best finish in recent times was that second we talked about yesterday at the Brickyard back in 94. You'd like a strong finish here. That's what we need, a real strong finish. Keep ourselves up there in the point standings. We want to keep in the top 20. That's the main thing. And uh, just get a good, solid run out of this today will we'll, we'll make us happy. Good luck. Thank you. All right, two words for a twisty place like Sears Point track position. If you're Mark Martin, start on the pole, and like he said, lead every lap. You don't have to worry about it. If you're anybody else and you're going to win, what you got to be able to do is pass people. Passing is racing, and passing at this place is very difficult. How do you do it? Tape Benny's blueprint to the dashboard. on a road course is a very tough proposition because the cars literally to get around the racetrack have to run in exactly the same position and Sears Point Raceway you can take a look very few places to pass look there's 12 corners on the racetrack three eight corners for a total of 15. let's watch turn four Mark Mark comes off three eight he gets a good run down the hill going into four and that's what you can do get off the corner so he can get in the next corner he gets position on Sterling Marlin and takes the spot away Turn six, another spot as you come off this corner. But you've also got to stay right on somebody's bumper and seize every opportunity. This time, Mark Martin goes to the corner, leading, slips a little bit. Earnhardt is right there on the inside, goes on, takes the lead and the victory. The next spot for passes, turn seven, the hairpin, about 40 miles per hour. You, you want to protect the inside, that's a preferred line. But every once in a while, a car can get by on the outside, as Jeff Gordon is doing. Now when he comes off this corner, he has the momentum. He can accelerate and pass Rusty Wallace on the outside. Through the S's is not a good place to pass. You've got to wait for turn 11 and try to outbreak the other guy. Watch Ricky Rudd go to the corner, but you've got to be careful because this can happen, and sometimes you'll knock that fender in on the tire. Turn 11, outbreak him going in the corner, take the spot away, and come down the start-finish line. Hey, Parsons, honest answer. What kind of road racer were you back when you were doing Winston Cup? Well, Dave, like most stock car drivers, when I first started the road courses, I really, really struggled. But once five or six years out of the way, you learn how to get in these corners, off these corners. It is the greatest fun you can have driving a race car. Let me ask you about track position. It's so important here. A man's got to do what a man's got to do. What if you try to force the issue in a section of this racetrack, make a pass that's not on the blueprint? Results are not good. The worst thing can happen, you get a tire off into the tire barrier, you put your car out for the day. The least thing can happen is you're going to knock a fender in on the tire. you got to make an unscheduled pit stop. Talk about track position. Now you start at the very end of the line. All right, Kyle Petty, we've just had a renowned ESPN expert analyze every possible passing opportunity at Sears Point. I just want to check on him and make sure he got it right. Where's the best place to pass? Um, the best place to pass at Sears Point, we're standing on a pit road. If you don't pass on pit road, there's, it's tough to get around anybody here. This is the best place, numero uno, number one. Got the crew that can do that today. Can you win this thing? 
We've got the crew that can do it. Uh, I don't know if we got the driver that can do it. That's my problem right now. But no, we got a we got a really good car. We come out here, we run really well, and uh, hopefully things will work out for us. I right, have a good run, man. Yeah, man. Enjoy your motorcycle ride. <laughs> yeah, I'm heading south. All right, Kyle Petty is well qualified here today and got a shot at it. They bring in specialists sometimes for road racing. This guy started out as that. Now he's a full-time Winston Cup guy. Let's go to Ray Dunlap. Well, they teased Wally Dolan back last week at Talladega. You were all excited about getting back in the race car, but you got to be pumped up for today. You love road racing. Oh, uh, we do. Uh, Sears Point's a fun racetrack. It's always a good race for the fans. And uh, unfortunately, we had a little problem yesterday with the engine. But we made some changes this morning, and we're either going to go forward or backwards in a hurry. Your best run is second place at Watkins Glen. How do those racetracks differ? Uh, they're, they're quite a bit different. This racetrack is a lot tougher than Watkins Glen. Uh, you really have to have a lot of shock control on this. It's a lot more race car here, but it's a fun track. It's a driver's track. You drive this place real hard, real aggressive, without killing your tires. Well, while he's got a good starting place today, he'll go off ninth. Hey, we got a busy week, too. We'll leave here, go back, back to Talladega for the rain date, and we've got the lineup for you. It's going to be NASCAR today at 1 o'clock Eastern Time Saturday on the Deuce, the Winston 500 at 1.30 on the Classic, and then, of course, RPM tonight to wrap it all up at 7 o'clock. That is next Saturday. Today is today, and we'll be right back. We're live. We're excited. We're coming to the top of the hour. That's when you switch over to the Classic for the St. Martin Supermarkets 300. Friday, the Fentangers were watching a great qualifying run, and then... Swaps ends of the Parts America Chevy had to requalify Saturday. Show me the lineup, if you will, from 15 on back. Sterling Marlin, better than average. Robbie Gordon and Mike Skinner, the rookies, 18th and 19th. Ernie Urban, 24th, had a two time winner. There's DW. He was sixth quick overall and fastest on the second day. Who's Tom Hubert? Johnny Benson's tire changer, that's who. And he's in the 78th car today. Dave Marcus rounding out the top 30. As you get on back there, Lance Hooper, 37th, is the Winston West champion. And you got a number of Winston West guys mixed in there with the provisionals toward the tail end of the field. Michael Walter doesn't have to worry about those guys because he starts sixth. He's way up front. And uh, you qualified pretty well, but you got a little unfinished business from this joint from last year, huh? Well, we had a great car last year and uh, got spun out a couple of times. So, uh... You need to be fast enough so the guys behind you can't run into you. I, I know that for sure. And so maybe this year our car will be quick enough to keep us out of trouble like that. Next question then, when you're starting sixth, is the five guys in front of you, is your car quick enough to just drive right by them and win this thing? Well, we know we can run with them. We saw that yesterday in the last practice. The sit-go forward was really good. And uh, that's a good feeling because, you know, uh, when you're near these guys, I'm right between him and him. And uh, y'all know who those guys are, and they win a lot of races, so that's a good place to be. In case you can't see those guys at home, that would be Terry Labonte and uh, Dale Cherif. Good company. Go fast. They wind up in the front a lot. <laughs> he's tall, he's handsome, but most importantly, he's smiling. Hey, if you're going to do good here, you know what? You got to be square. That's right, you got to be square. What is he talking about? I don't have the answer, but I know the guy who does. Let's take a short hop over to Ray's Garage. great on the billboard, but this is exactly what you don't want your race car to do here at Sears Point Raceway. One of the unique challenges to road course racing is to keep all four tires on the racing surface. This gives you maximum traction, and that equates to speed. The NASCAR Winston Cup cars are required to weigh 3,400 pounds. A well-built chassis will scale in at 3,100 pounds. Now, this allows the team to locate that additional 300 pounds where it's most beneficial. On an oval, the advantageous position for weight placement is always on the left side of the race car. But here at Sears Point, what the teams will do is actually take the weight out of the frame rail and move it from the left side to the right side of the race car. This track has a lot of elevation changes and constant left and right hand turns. So the teams will go with what they call a square setup. 50% of the weight on the right side, 50% of the weight on the left side. Now there's another unique situation and that has to do with the tires. Goodyear has brought the 5592 compound for both sides of the car. Left and right sides will have the exact same compound and that's unique to here and Suzuka Japan. Now I'll tell you what, even with a square setup and with the exact same compound on the race cars, somebody's gonna do just like that billboard and try to race around here up on two wheels. Yeah, I like it when they bounce the cars off the curb and stuff. It makes great TV, but of course it's not the way to go fast. To do that, you want to be smooth. Let's go to a very smooth guy with Bill Weber. And a very consistent one and the reigning Winston Cup champion. What are you doing to your car there, Terry? I was working on it. Oh, okay. <laughs> that won't bother you. Uh, keys to getting around here. You're a good, smooth driver. You have great luck at Watkins Glen. How about here? Well, I'll tell you what, this is a tough track. It's a lot different than Watkins Glen, and uh, 
I don't know. It seems like every practice you go out there and you really come in and you just try to work on something just to find a little bit more to get your car to handle a little bit better. So uh, I don't know. I think we're pretty good, but uh, it's a tough race. We'll just do the best we can. Okay, you can go back to work now. Okay, thanks. Have a good race. Thanks. Terry Labonte, Dave. <laughs> Speaking of smooth guys, Weber is too, huh? The race is on ESPN Classic. It's coming up next. You'll do the switch at the top of the hour. Tonight at 7 o'clock, you will dial back to the deuce, and you will watch RPM tonight. Find out what happened here, what happened at Indy, what happened everywhere in the world of racing. We'll be right back. NASCAR Today is brought to you by Daytona USA, the ultimate motorsports attraction. Hey, by my count, we've knocked off most of the top five on this television show, but we missed the guy we teased at the top that we were going to talk to, Bill Weber. Talk to Jeff Gordon. Sitting in the car, the DuPont Chevrolet, getting ready, getting strapped in. Normally, you want to be on the inside, but where you want to be when you get to the top of that first hill? Uh, I'd like to be single file, I think. Uh, you know, usually uh, you can get it all worked out and you fall into line, but uh, actually the outside is not a bad place in turn two at the top of the hill. So, because the next one's a left-hander, so we'll just have to see what kind of start we get and uh, hopefully get in line and just go road racing. Usually it works out, huh? Well, usually. Anything's possible in this sport. Hey, uh, no road course wins yet. How about today? I'd love to get a road course win, and, uh, uh, you know, we've got a great opportunity here. This is a good car, probably the best car I've ever had on a road course. Uh, we came close uh, last year, and, and uh, that restart kind of got us so uh, maybe i learned something last year when we come down to that same situation best car he's ever had on a road course remember that in about 74 laps dave dale jarrett's got a pretty good horse here and he's got the point lead and he's testing his radio i think at the moment are we okay here got time for a quick question we hear this car is pretty good we know you can drive them what about road racing you ready to win one of these deals well i think we can we've got an awful good car here uh this road racing is about equipment and todd parrot and the guys have given me a really good race car and uh, try to stay out of trouble here, get everything adjusted, think we'll be okay. Hey, man, we appreciate it. Have a good run today. Let's uh, check the guy who won the last time we went road racing, Bill. And that was Jeff Bodine at Watkins Glen. He sits in the QVC Ford. They're actually taping on his radio wire, so he'll be able to talk to the crew and say, hey, this car's running great. That's what you're going to tell him, right? Uh, exactly. That's what we're going to say, yeah. In the QVC Don Gillis Ford is running great. It ran good yesterday in practice. Let's hope this is a great race for us. Uh, we're looking forward to it. You guys have fun out there watching. Dawn Gillis won a contest through QVC. She has her name on the quarter panels and her picture on the hood. And Jeff plans to drive her right to victory lane, Dave. Two things with Ricky Rudd. First of all, I want to argue with you. You said you didn't think you were very good at that lap, but they're still cheering up there over the TV audiences. You did a great job with that, man. Thanks a lot. That was fun. I appreciate it. That was a lot of fun trying to do that. Let me ask you about this race car. You're back here, in, uh, you know, a ways back, 10th starting spot. Do you catch all those guys up front, pass them, and win another one of these deals? Well, I think we can. You know, it all depends if we get this thing set up for the long runs. It's kind of unusual starting back there. I don't, I don't think we've been off the front two or three spots in, uh, since they've been coming out here. But it really, if the guy that gets the car set up for the long runs is going to be the guy that wins the race. We just hope we've got this tied forward adjusted. Watch the 10 car. He knows how to pass people. Hey, we're pretty well wrapped up down here. We got to get over to the other network and show you the big race. It is the Save Mart Supermarket 300. It's on ESPN Classic. Certainly hope you've enjoyed the things we've had to bring you here today on the pre-race show. We invite you to enjoy all of the action here at Sears Point and then come back and ride on back to Talladega next week for the rain date. It is also on ESPN. I want to thank all the guys who helped us out here today. Ray Dunlap and Benny Parsons and, of course, Bill Weber. Great job, guys. we got the first team in the booth ready to go, so i got to get out of here. I'm Dave Despain. Thanks for watching NASCAR today. See ya. The Georgia Dome in Atlanta has played home to the Super Bowl. Ready, go. All right, and now, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce the sheriff for Sonoma County, our Grand Marshal, Mr. Mark Ide. Gentlemen, start your engines.
rain of Alabama a week ago to the sunshine of the Bay Area. NASCAR Winston Cup teams have crossed the Golden Gate Bridge and come to the hills of Northern California, whose valleys produce some of the greatest wine in the world. Serenity usually surrounds this valley, but today the ear-splitting sound of race cars ascends from Sears Point Raceway. It should surprise no one that Rusty Wallace was one of two drivers to break the track record here at Sears Point. You know, road racing Rusty has won more in the modern era than any other driver six times. And today, he rides a rocket that propelled him to victory a year ago. They nicknamed the car killer. That's what it did to the competition both here and in Japan in 1996. On Friday, Mark Martin won the pole with a track record. Today, he hopes to break a personal record. He hasn't been to victory lane in 42 races. That's the longest winless streak since the first win in his career. Right now, he's on the pole. In 74 laps, Mark Martin hopes to be in victory lane. Ricky Rudd and road racing are a great combination. They're meant for each other, sort of like Fred and Ginger, Siskel and Ebert, Patrick and Overman. You get the idea. Ricky has sort of mastered the high act of fast speed finesse on the high oval. His floorboard footwork would make even Arthur Murray proud. So don't be surprised if this tied ride hand goes its way toward the front. Wally Dollenbach has 117 Winston Cup starts and no wins. He broke a motor in final practice here on Saturday, so he didn't get to test his setup. They've gambled this morning. Very seldom is a guy who's never won a race one of the favorites. But believe me, this guy rolling off here truly is today. Only once in the eight-year history of this race the driver come from the back of the field to win. Actually, it happened twice in the same race, and Ernie Irvin was the man to do it. He said, my secret, I try to outbreak him in turn 11. This morning, his team changed the motor, the transmission, and the rear gear in the car because he said, braking won't be enough. I need to get off turn 11. I'm going to do it all with second and third gear if it stays in the car. In qualifying on Friday, Dale Earnhardt went out early on a slick track on stickers instead of scuffs in a brand new seat. Yesterday, they did not have the proper combination for final practice, and Earnhardt parked the car after just a handful of laps. They've made the changes to the car this morning, and Dale Earnhardt's new seat is now on the rig. He's in his old, comfortable seat. Earnhardt hasn't been to victory lane in a long time, and today he starts 32nd. But he also is one of the favorites at Sears Point on this sunny Sunday. Last week at Talladega, we talked about Martinsville and Bristol being such mechanical racetracks. And at Talladega, all the drivers were concerned about was air and trying to get aerodynamics to get the car through the air. But here in the beautiful Sonoma Valley, there's one other concern. Not only do they have to worry about engines, gears, brakes, but the transmission. That baby is allowed to lay down the ground any lap, man. Yes, it could happen. And Benny, this is a driver's racetrack as well. They have to have complete concentration all the time. They change gears at least 14 times a lap, some of them more than that. There are 12 turns on this racetrack, lots of places you can goof up out there. And so it is a driver's racetrack, so it puts every part of racing into play here. Car, mechanical parts of the car, and of course the driver. ESPN, the world leader in motorsports coverage, welcomes you live to Sears Point Raceway near Sonoma, California, and the Save Mart Supermarket's 300 NASCAR Winston Cup race. It's the ninth event of the year, and Dale Jarrett continues to cling to a points lead he has had since the fourth race of the season, the margin only 45, however, over the defending series champion, Terry Labonte. Six through ten, separated by only 47 points, seventh, eighth, and ninth, separated by only four markers. Hi, everyone. I'm Bob Jenkins. What a difference in weather since last weekend. Not a cloud in the sky here today in Sonoma. Now, since last weekend, the teams have gone back, reloaded, and made the long trek out here to the West Coast. When they're finished, they'll make the long trek back to Talladega for next Saturday's event. Now today, one of two road course races on the schedule. It's a race that a lot of Winston Cup drivers don't take too kindly to. On the other hand, other drivers, it's their opportunity for a day in the spotlight. Five onboard cameras will be in use today. Here's Ricky Craven as he takes the Budmobile up the hill. Hut Strickland also has the Circuit City onboard camera working for us. Here is the Briggs and Stratton uh, onboard camera. The car driven by Robbie Gordon. 
Also, Ricky Rudd will carry an onboard camera. He should provide some great shots for us. Rusty Wallace has won as he begins this race from the outside of the front row. And Mark Martin also has the onboard camera, and he is the pole sitter for this event. One more warm-up lap, so we're going to take a break. Stand by for the start of the Save Mart Supermarkets 300 from Sears Point. ESPN's live coverage of the Save Mart Supermarkets 300 from Sears Point Raceway near Sonoma, California is being brought to you by the owners, managers, and crew who proudly call the McDonald's in your neighborhood, My McDonald's. By Brewery Fresh Budweiser, who reminds you that fresh beer tastes better. And by Quaker State Motor Oil for a clean running engine. Let's take a look at our race analysis as we get set to take the green flag here. We'll go 74 laps. The track record is held by Ernie Irvin, who set it back in 1992. They'll need to come in for fuel between laps 26 and 32, and the purse is over $1.8 million. As far as the manufacturers are concerned, Ford leads the uh, manufacturer's battle by just two points over Chevrolet. Ford has 23 representatives in today's field. Chevrolet 13, there are eight Pontiacs. Let's take a look at the starting lineup. Now, the pole sitter has his choice of starting inside or outside. Mark Martin will line up on the outside of the front row, so these two will actually flip-flop. It's Mark Martin's fourth career road course pole. Rusty Wallace is the defending champion. In the second row, Jeff Gordon has won the last two Winston Cup events looking for his first road course race win. Terry Labonte, fifth place in the last two events here. Brett Bodine has his best start of 1997. Michael Waltrip, his best road course finish, was ninth. Jeff Bodine won the most recent road course race at Watkins Glen. Dale Jarrett has two top tens in 21 road course races. Wally Dahlenbach third, finished third here last year. Ricky Rudd has five road course wins. In the 11th position, Kyle Petty with one road course win and Ted Musgrave. Starting 13th and 14th, Phil Elliott, who was injured last year and missed this race, and Ward Burton who is 11th in points this year. He was 38th in points at this time last year. Inside of row eight, Kenny Schrader, six straight top ten Sears point finishes in Sterling Marlin on the outside. In row nine on the inside, John Andretti, he'll be on the pole at Talladega next Saturday. And Robbie Gordon, who had to pass his time in practice. Then he comes Mike Skinner, the top leading rooker. He has two rookie, he has two thirds in the trucks here. And Jeff Burton, the Texas winner. Row 11. Derek Cope and his Hutch Trickham. He's carrying her on board, Circuit City on board. In row 12, Bobby Hamilton and Ernie Urban. He's a two-time winner here at Sears Point. In row 13, Jimmy Spencer and D.W., the fastest qualifier in second round. And in the 14th row, Tom Hubert, who was a tire changer last week, a race car driver this week, and Butch Gilliland, the last winner in the West to West series. And in row 15, Bobby Labonte, who crashed during qualifying on Friday, driving a backup car here today. And Dave Marcus, with a good qualifying run, will start 30th. Row 16, we see Bobby Hill and Jr. in the car number 77, Dale Earnhardt. Don't look for him to stay back there too long. Row 17, we find Steve Grissom and Mike Wallace made a good qualifying run to get in the field. Johnny Benson will start on the inside of row 18, along with Kenny Wallace, who won the pole a few weeks ago at Martinsville, Virginia. Lance Hooper, subbing for Greg Sachs, will start 37th. And Ken Peterson qualified the car number 19, but Gary Bradbury will be driving it. Those taking provisionals for the race today are Jeremy Mayfield, Ricky Craven, Morgan Shepard, Jeff Davis, and two Winston West drivers, Sean Woodside and Larry Guzelman. Those are the 44 drivers that are set to go. They were going to get the green. However, there is a can on the track, some debris, so they're going to take one more lap before they get the green flag. Now, here are the drivers that missed the event. Rick Mass, Joe Nemechek, R.K. Smith, Robert Presley, Chad Little, Gary Smith, David Green, Dick Trickle, and Chuck Pruitt all had to go home after qualifying. We'll be right back. Yeah. Up through the S's, they're just a short distance away from the green flag. Last week, rain out on Sunday and Monday, but we are back at Talladega this coming Saturday with NASCAR today at 1 o'clock Eastern time over on the Deuce. And live coverage of the Winston 500 will be live at 1.30 here on ESPN. That is next Saturday. Dr. Jerry Punch.
If you're wondering why Mark Martin is starting on the outside of row one when he's the pole sitter, that's a NASCAR rule in any race, be it an oval track or a road course. The pole sitter can decide to start on the inside or the outside. It's rarely done. About three or four years ago, Ricky Rudd started where Mark Martin is starting today. But why did he choose that? Well, turn one is the fastest part of the racetrack. He wants to be on the outside so he doesn't get bottled in going up that hill in heavy traffic. Let's check in with Bill Weber. Well, Doc, another guy to watch today is Mark Martin's teammate, Jeff Burton. He's a big beneficiary of the rain out of Talladega. Wasn't feeling well last week. Feels great this week. Qualified 20th, but his laps have gotten faster every time he's got out on the track. And his crew's optimistic Jeff Burton will have a strong finish on the road course here at Sears Point. Beautiful field of cars and people everywhere. Well over 100,000 people have gathered to see this NASCAR Winston Cup event. They come off of corner number 11 looking for the green flag to begin the race and the green is out. We are underway. has gotten off to a great start as they work their way through the S's. He's leading Rusty Wallace, but by less than a car length, and Jeff Gordon has moved into third spot. Looks like everybody is uh, on course and doing well here in the first lap. Well, it's absolutely amazing these guys are able to get in line. Now that two of breath. And look at Dolan back on the inside. He's already passed Jeff Bonine. Now he's trying on Brett Bonine. He has position. You notice they've moved those tires in so you can actually run across and even inside those rumble strips to get position there in turn number 11. The first lap is complete and Mark Martin is showing the way. Wally Dolan back up to fifth position already. He is the road racing expert, got his experience in Trans Am, and he is a definite favorite here today. There's Sterling Marlin. He's on the inside of Mike Skinner. And Robbie Gordon, the fastest car of the 40 car. Coors Light car was the fastest car in practice yesterday afternoon. This is the Briggs and Stratton onboard camera along with Robbie Gordon. We're right down at turn four. On the brakes hard. Right-hander now hit the gas. This is turn five. A long, sweeping right-hander. Up the hill. And all we see is sky as we go into the carousel. Now we drop off and go down into turn six. This is a, a long turn as well. Then it gets pretty sharp as they head into turn seven. Here's Dollenback making Whoa. another pass on Terry Labonte. He is up to fourth position. Wally Dollenback in the green 46. He told us last week that First Union has come up with some extra money, and they are going to see that he has an opportunity to make every race, other race, this coming year. He was only going to run a partial season, and boy, is he turning on the afterburners here. Had an engine problem in practice yesterday afternoon, but they changed the engine, and he said that change some other things on the car as well and looking good he said he would either go forwards or backwards oh jeff gordon trying to get on the inside of rusty it's all brakes no not quite but here comes dollar back on the outside but is he gonna lose the spot to terry labonte no jeff gordon still working on rusty wallace Jeff cut the corner pretty close there in uh, number 11, but never did get the spot, and as a matter of fact, was able to hold off Wally Dolan back who went to the outside. Turn two, up the hill. Now they're going to turn left, that's three. They go back to the right, 3-8. Sterling Marlin. He and Robbie Gordon still racing, bumper to bumper. That's John Nemechek. Uh, and Fred. Sterling Marlin had a good first lap. He's now up to 17th position. Well, 
Bobby Gordon are right on the rear spoiler of that car as they come down the hill once again. There's some, uh, looks like there's some damage on Earnhardt's car. Yeah, on that right front. Definitely. There's some smoke. There's smoke out of the car. A little bit of dust kicked up there as they came off of corner number six. A little wide now. Earnhardt is going to go to the inside of Bobby Labonte and pick up the spot. And put him up to 28. He's already 30 seconds. Up front, still about a car length advantage or less. Mark Martin over Rusty Wallace, Jeff Gordon, and Wally Dallenbach. Now, is Gordon going to try it this time? No, he will settle in and run in third place. Here's a Napa field summary. And folks, believe it or not, we accelerate third gear. And right here, Rusty's going in fourth gear. About, just before they back off right here, is the fastest spot on the racetrack. back down again. Boy, are they busy. They work for everything they get. Up on the rumble strips, getting two wheels off the uh, ground. This is turn number five. This is turn five here. Sweeping right-hander. There's Ricky Rudd, who is a five-time winner on road courses. He's right behind Dale Jarrett. Over this corner, about, about 75 miles per hour. Turn seven, the hairpin. Up we go. Oh. Rusty took a look. He's there. He got there. there. Rusty Wallace goes into the lead. And that pass was accomplished on a section of a racetrack that you don't normally associate with passing. Normally you don't. Through the S's, they say that is, is among the worst places to try to pass. But apparently he saw a weakness on Mark Martin somewhere in that area and decided he'd make the run at it. Looked like a moment ago when Jeff Gordon got alongside Rusty Wall said, Rusty said, look, I think i got to step it up because right now Jeff Gordon's running faster than I am. And he has stepped it up. Taking the lead. Now let's see if Jeff Gordon can come up and make a move on Mark Martin. That's him, Jeff Gordon, the DuPont Chevy. It's a 74-lap race. And at the moment, Rusty Wallace has the lead over Mark Martin and Jeff Gordon. Dolan back fourth, Labonte fifth. Rusty Wallace, he missed the corner. Whoa! The leader, Rusty Wallace, overcooked it going into turn seven, relinquishes the lead, falls back to fifth. Man, oh man, the right front brake just locked up going in the corner. He got in there too hard, apparently, and just... Uh... Hit the, had to hit the brakes hard and right out into the grass he went. Jerry Punch. Well, a minute ago when he took the lead, Robin Pemberton looked at me and said, you know, we had a meeting this morning and talked about him being patient. So that's our Mr. Patience. He went at a whole three laps until he decided to charge the lead. But right there, that charge could have cost him. Well, he'll have to work his way back up. Rather uncharacteristic of Rusty Wallace, but here's how it happened. Coming down off six at full throttle here to seven, and then he just stands on the brakes and he gets in the corner too hard. He, he has to lock them up to keep the car from going on up in the dirt. Yeah, he was going to spin it out if he turned that car right yeah. going in there. He was, he was in there too hard. He realized it. So the best thing he could do is keep it straight, not spin it, get on out there in the dirt, lose those positions, and come back. Now from his uh, bumper cam... concern now is what has that done to his right front tire? We know that it's flat spotted that right front tire. Is there going to be a vibration there? Fortunately, he has radial tires. And if that had been bias fly tires, he'd probably have a flat tire from cutting it. The, the, the radial tires don't cut nearly as easy on those gravels and things, so apparently everything's okay because he still runs pretty strong. Here's the car number 78 off course. Uh, Hubert. 
That's the young man who the tire changer for the 30 car. He also is the shop foreman for Kurt Roark's truck team, the NASCAR Craftsman truck team. But the 78 car, Billy Standard said, look, I need some help getting in this race. And Hubert was the second fastest qualifier. And they said, look, you go ahead and race him. You got us in the field. You got us in the field. You race him. Carl Petty and Dale Jarrett have been swapping positions back there. Right now, Dale Jarrett has the ninth position, and Kyle is in tenth. Let's take a look at what happened up in turn number three just a second ago. Let's look. Oh, Sterling Marlin just smokes that right front tire. He and Ernie Irvin make some contact. We see the damage on the four car already, and boom, there goes the 40 car back by, So and Daryl Walter. Sterling lost three spots. Here's Bill Weber. And, and Sterling Marlin has just pulled on to pit road. He also had contact with Robbie Gordon. So Sterling on pit road here early. Right side damage will head for his pit down near the start finish line. So Sterling Marlin, the first one on pit road here at Sears Point, guys. There's pretty significant damage there just uh, in front of the right rear. Punch. As they jack the Kodak film Chevy up, the problem on Sterling's car is he has only fourth gear. That's why he was unable to get through the, through the turns very quickly. He couldn't downshift and had to use the brakes to try to slow the car down. That's one of the reasons he had a problem with keeping the car stable on the racetrack. Now they jack the left side of the car up and have a crew member under the car trying to get the car out of fourth gear and see if they could possibly get second and third back, which he will definitely need today if he's to have any shot at all of being competitive. Man, oh man, that's a tough break. It's early on. Now he's still on the lead lap. Here come the leaders through the S's, through turns 8, 8A, eight, eight, coming into turn 9. So Sterling goes out of the pits. It looks like he might be able to stay on the lead lap. If he has first and second gear. Yeah. Sterling Marlin has left the pit area and goes back onto the racetrack. There's the Kodak Film Chevy back at full speed up the hill. Sure looks like he does. Looks like his car's up to speed. Meanwhile, the leaders are down in there to see coming off turn 11, going into turn 12. And Rusty Wallace is going by Wally Dallenbach, trying to work his way, trying to get by Dallenbach, trying to get his way back to the front. Well, Terry Labonte has gotten around Dallenbach, so Labonte moves up to third spot. And Jeff Bodine closes up on that group of cars. We understand that the gearbox is fixed on the Kodak Film Chevrolet of Sterling Marlin. So he should be able to stay out there and stay in the lead lap. Now Rusty Wallace trying to get around the 46 of Wally Dallenbach. They're headed turn toward turn number four. Jeff Bodine closes in on Rusty Wallace. Bodine is certainly no slouch on road courses. He's won three times and in fact ran, uh, won the most recent road course race at Watkins Glen last year. There we see Kenny Schrader, the Skull Car, the 99, Jeff Burton, John Andretti. Here comes D.W. Wally Robbie Gordon now back to the lead. This is Mark Martin and Jeff Gordon and they're making some, putting some distance on Cherry Labonte. And here comes Rusty and trying to get by Dallin back. Looks like he might do it. Jeff O'Donnell, is he going to try to do the same thing? Yeah, but he couldn't get the traction off that turn from, from the low side of the racetrack. So Rusty is back up to fourth now after losing the lead when he overcooked it going into turn number seven. We're looking back from Rusty's vantage point to Dallin back and Jeff Bodine. One in turn 11 would be a great spot for Jeff Bodine to try to outbreak Dallin Mack. That's exactly what he is going to do. Pulled it off rather easily, as a matter of fact. So Jeff Bodine moves up to fifth spot. We're getting to the point of the race now. They've, they've completed nine laps. And the, the chassis of the car, we've heard several drivers talk about long runs of the cars. And now we're getting into that point. Those tires are getting heated up. The brakes are getting heated up. And we'll begin to see now who has the best chassis on the race cars. We saw Bill Elliott pick up a position there on Ted Musgrave. There's Bill, who, as we said, did not race here last year. He had just suffered the uh, broken leg and the crash at Talladega. But he is back and, in fact, himself uh, won his first NASCAR Winston Cup race on a road course in Riverside back in 1983. That puts Bill up to 12th, right behind Ricky Rudd, who is 11th. Musgrave, 13th. 
once again is Mark Martin with a rather sizable advantage now on Jeff Gordon. And there's a bit of racetrack between Gordon and the third Jeff place. Bodine is off the pace. Yes, Jeff is. Bodine is off the pace. Tough break. His brother Brett going through the corner along with Michael Waltrip and Petty and Jared and Rudd. But there is obviously something wrong with the QBC board. A little whisper of smoke. Yes, I did, and I, I did as well. Now, this is a tough spot because he's not up to speed, and he's got cars behind him through the S's. And this is definitely not a good place to pass now. Like he's... No, he's not back up to speed. He's a pretty big guy. Can we see some heavy smoke oh, yeah. now coming out of the car? Yep. It looked okay coming through the carousel. Jerry, what's wrong? He's coming to pit road, but his word on the radio was, guys, I think I just broke the engine. We're going to try to get back to pit road, but it may be over. Well, he is entering pit road, and so he safely made it to that point, but uh, does not look good. Tough break. They've gotten up to fifth spot, and there we see the picture of Don Gillis. He talked about her, the uh, young lady who won the contest at QVC, or picture on the hood. He had a good race car. Won the race last year at Watkins Glen. So maybe an early out here for Jeff Bodine as he pulls in. Meanwhile, on the racetrack, it's still Mark Martin leading Jeff Gordon. We'll be right back. When back at Sears Point Raceway, Sonoma, California, the St. Mark Supermarkets 300 underway with Mark Martin leading Jeff Gordon, Terry Labonte, and Rusty Wallace. Here is Wally Dallenbach running in fifth position. Looks like that Dale Jarrett uh, in front of Kyle Petty now. There's the Burton brothers. Ward Burton, the 22. Jeff in the 99. Jeff started 20th. And he's up for 14th. Yeah, yeah, made a good move. Here comes Ernie Irvin into the picture. Ernie's made some, a good move also. He started 24th. Yeah, he's up to 17th. There he is, battling with John Andretti, the RCA car. That's Ernie, the 28th from Black Havlin, Mexico. And there's Daryl Walker right on his bumper. Daryl started 26. You see, Ernie's got some damage to the nose of that car. He's in the back of someone. Might have been Sterling Maughan when he had that mix-up up there. How Ernie Irvin has come from the 24 starting position. He gained one position on the first lap, stayed there until lap four, then moved up three more. And by the 11th lap, he picked up three more. He's now 17. Bill Weber. And Bobby's doing that because they did a motor and gear combination change this morning. You heard Jerry Punch at the beginning of the race talk about Ernie's success here and the philosophy of the team. But the principle behind making those changes this morning was so Ernie would be quick off turn 11 and right now that's where he's catching the field and picking up some of his positions so Ernie started 24th moving up to 17th and their combination that they put in Mark Reno and company on that Texaco Haviland Ford working here in the early laps at Sears Point. Two-time winner here at this racetrack in uh, 92 and 94. And Darrell Walton with a little racer there yeah, trying to get on the outside of him. Ernie going in turn seven. And Darrell has picked up eight positions. He, he is doing well. He was the fastest second round qualifier. And about six fastest overall. And when Noel Riverside Raceway was in action, uh, he was very good there, winning in 79, 2 in 89, 1 in 81, and 1 in 86. He's a five time winner on road courses. Talking about Darrell Waltrip, he may be trying to get the spot from Ernie, but can't do it. That vision's about breaking the 28 car going in the corner. Couldn't make it happen. See Mike Skinner back behind Robbie Gordon. Pretty good run for Skinner. First time here in a full-body stock car. Robbie Gordon was the fastest during happy hour yesterday. And as you can see from the Napa Field summary, uh, 43 cars still out there on the racetrack. Jeff Bodine is off the track, not officially declared out of the race yet, but he is off of the racetrack. Or when you hit those bumps, the car upsets pretty well, doesn't it? Yes, it does. It's just amazing how busy these drivers are as you go around this racetrack. Well, let's get the Jeff Bodine story from Dr. Punch. Well, Jeff is back in the garage area. He's climbed out of his uh, fourth Thunderbird. Jeff, he thought car number seven qualifying seventh would be an omen, but it wasn't. 
I don't believe in that stuff, <laughs> and I guess they proved that. Uh, no, I don't. I'm not superstitious. Uh, you make your own luck, and uh, it looks like uh, for everyone watching uh, the crew and. Lee Morris, Bob Glidden, I know you guys are watching. It looks like something in front of the engine broke, the cam, or uh, it's locked right up. So we'll give you a call in a little while to try to figure this thing out. But the car's running really good, uh, just riding back there. And uh, Rusty got off course a little bit up there. And, and got, they got by him, and I was just following him, got by Wally. Wally was really strong in those first few laps, pretty aggressive. And he looked good, but he faded a little bit. My car was getting better, actually. Uh, and that's what we saw in practice the other day on the older tires. It was a better car than most out there. And I think we would have seen that if we'd stayed out there a little longer. But something broke, and we're really disappointed. GBC had a uh, promotion here with Don Gillis. She's on her hood. She was our official sponsor for this weekend. But she's going to get the hood, and it's all in one piece. I didn't dent it up for her. But we got a, a, a lot to look forward to this next weekend, a big race at Talladega, and we're going to have a great car there. Looking forward to it, a better car than even what we had last week. So we'll go to Talladega and see what we can do next week. And uh, anyone out there wants to get their name on a race car, call us. We're looking for an associate sponsor. We really do need the help, so give us a call. All right, Jeff Odon out of it as the 33 car is his trouble, guys. Yeah, he's got a flat tire. He and Ernie Urban got together going into turn 11. Urban spun around while you were talking to Jeff Bodine, and look at that right front tire on Ken Schrader's Chevrolet. He's, he's got, got to go two and a half miles on the rim, and it's going to tear everything up by the time he gets back to the garage area. That thing is going to start flapping. It's going to tear the uh, wheel well. Look at this. We see John Andretti had just been able to get by the 33 car, and that time Ernie gets the corner. He tries to outbreak, and he gets the car a little bit sideways to correct the car to save it. He had to turn it back, and he turned right into the 33 car. And positions are just going by as Ernie sits there. He must have lost about 11 or 12. Yeah, about a dozen, I think. And look at this. Schrader still trying to get to the pits. There's Ernie being shown in 29th position there now. And we've talked about him being up to 17th there a moment ago. But he has come from the back of the pack before to win this race. He has not had a great deal of success in the last three races. You saw there how he has fallen in the point standings, but don't count Ernie out yet. Here he comes off of corner number 10. If he's going to the pits, he will... Uh Meanwhile, Ken Schrader continues to lip around. He's just now getting through the S's, so he's still got a ways to go before he gets to his pit area. We'll take a break and be right back. Cam, you look back from leader Mark Martin's car to second place Jeff Gordon. Ken Schrader has made it into the pits. They have uh, made the repairs, and Dr. Punch was there when it happened. Well, they came in and took what's left of this right front tire off the car, and what Kenny said was that the contact with the 28 car basically sheared off the... Uh the valve stem and cut the tire down and that they're carrying it behind the wall. They were going to just change two right side tires and try to get back and stay on the lead lap, but NASCAR was going to hold him 15 seconds on pit road and when they held him, he said, we might as well change left side tires while we're sitting here because we're going to go a lap down anyway. He did indeed go a lap down, Jerry, back in 43rd position. There see him. He doesn't realize. He doesn't realize just how flat the tire is. This is going into turn three. He tries to turn in, and the car bent that right since the right front tire. Right front tire is flat. It just simply will not turn, and he finally just had to slow down and ride around the racetrack about 20 miles per hour. Bobby Labonte and Jimmy Spencer, along with Bobby Hamilton, racing here into turn number seven. Meanwhile, here is the top trio. It is Martin, then Jeff Gordon, Terry Labonte. Rusty Wallace. And we see that Wally Dallenbach has slid backwards. There goes Dale, Brett Bodine, Ricky Rudd, Michael Waltrip, Kyle Petty, Bill Elliott. Here's Jeff Burton trying to outbreak Ward, his brother, into turn number 11. Give me room, brother, please. And he did. He gave him room, but Jeff broke no. loose and Ward kept the position. Yep. Jerry 
Wally Dallenbach is back now to 12th position. What's going on there? Yeah, remarkable, Bob, considering the fact that he did not get passed on the racetrack the entire race a year ago, starting back in 15th and finishing third. Only lost spots in the pits on pit stops. The word is that the problem is the brakes. They may have broken a brake line on the car number 46, the first Union Chevrolet. The brakes have gotten worse and worse and worse. And now uh, Tony Glover and the crew are going to discuss it. Apparently, it just got more and more worse uh, for Wally Dallenbach. Let's check in with Bill Weber. And Hut Strickland on pit road, they changed left side tires, dropped the jack, and set Hut out. The tires looked fine when he went by me, but he might have thought he had a left side going down. So Hut stops, gets two tires, fuel, heads back out, does not lose a lap. This might be strategy. Could be. Hut Strickland might be pitting right now and hoping the caution flag comes out. He can stay out there and maybe gain some spots. And we will see that on road course racing sometimes. They'd rather stop under the green than have the caution to come out right after they stop. So it wouldn't surprise me to see others come in here before too long because they're in the window now. They can make make a stop anytime along now and then one more stop oh, him to the end. Look, look at the black marks back. Marks, yeah. Where Mark Martin almost lost control. Wow, he came out of corner number 11 and had it sideways, but he maintains the advantage over Jeff Gordon. Boy, that was a scary moment for Mark. Even leaving the race around this racetrack is difficult. I'm telling you. As Rusty Wallace has found out, and now Mark Lodge finding out. You see how these cars go through the corner, and you the cars just don't get a lot of body roll. That's because they've started using rear sway bars. You know, bars that keeps the body flat. The, the wheels go up and down, but the body stays flat. And that's one reason they're going so fast now around these tracks is with the rear sway bar. They've always had a front. Just in the past few years, they've started running the rear. I was talking about Wally Dollar back. He's dropped all the way back to 22nd now. Wow. And as you can see, only one car, that is Ken Schrader, that is uh, not on the lead lap. And Jeff Bodine is now listed as out of the race because of the engine failure. On board with Rusty Wallace. Whoa, look at him. He saw on the wheel there. And so did Mark Martin just a lap ago when he went through corner number 10. Look at this. Watch this. Now, I want you, when he gets through, watch the black mark. Look at the black marks that he leaves right there as he gets that car under control. Wow. But he really didn't lose uh, much time to Jeff Gordon. This I, stayed, uh, I expect of course, Jeff was already off the gas and heading into turn 11, but he probably hit the brakes a little harder than right. he meant to, so he's going to wreck. In fact, it looks like the Terry Labonte, his teammate, is closing in on Jeff Gordon, and Rusty is staying right there with him. Basically a four-car race at the moment. Here comes the fifth-place car of Dale Jarrett, then Brett Bodine, Ricky Rudd, Mar uh, Michael Waltrip. Here comes Bill Elliott and others, including Kyle Petty and Ted Musgrave. And there's G.W. still following John Andretti. And he's still moving up, too, Darrell. I mean, Benny, he's uh, up to 15th now. He was very optimistic yesterday afternoon in happy hour, so he felt like it's one of the best cars he'd had in a long, long time here on any road course. Right now he's trying to work around John Andretti. Ward Burton to the inside of Kyle Petty as they cross the start-finish line and head up the hill. Here's a pretty good race. Or outside, whichever way you want to look yeah, at right. it. right. <laughs> inside on one turn and outside on the other. But Kyle beats him into that shorter corner there. And here comes Dolan back, finally coming in for a stop, Jerry. Well, they had to go ahead and stop now. The brakes have gotten worse and worse, so he's really being very careful coming down pit road. The pit road speed starts at the first pit box and goes to the last pit box. They will change the tires on the right side of the car. We are just hearing, by the way, that Sterling Marlin has the car stuck in fourth gear only again, so he'll be coming in very shortly. His car slower on the racetrack as work continues on the first Union Chevrolet. Right side tires, now left side tires. As of yet, they have not raised the hood. They're trying to look at the brake calipers. They take the tires off, see if there's a broken caliper. And looking now at the left rear to see if possibly there could be a problem back there in the left rear. Now one crew member inside the car working in the back of the race car. As the leaders now come down through the S's headed for turn 10, Dallenbach still sits on pit road and now moves away and will try to stay in the lead lap with the leaders now head for turn 11. Well, he was in for 38 and a half seconds and it looks like he's having a little bit of difficulty getting that car up to speed. 
brakes awfully hard to keep brakes on this car. You've got to have a lot of air going through them and because there we see the leader, Mark Martin, coming right behind Dahlenbeck. That's how close he is to being lapped. And Kyle Petty, we understand, also had a problem on the racetrack. Coming into turn seven, similar to what Rusty Wallace, he goes in a little bit high, locks that brake, and here he goes, gets uh, all four wheels out on the dirt. Hmm. Plows a little bit there. That fiberglass don't like that plowing. So Kyle lost several positions. Here now, uh, Rusty's got around Terry. Rusty is... Whoa, and Gordon is off course. That's Robbie Gordon. That's turn two, I believe. Yes, it was. This is around three as Mike Skinner goes by. Oh, Skinner goes straight. Wow, straight he's through off the course. Dirt. Where are you going, Mike? <laughs> Where'd he wind up? Well, well, he's back there. on track. Back on track yeah. now. Now, Robbie Gordon is off the pace. Well, I think it, it looks like the front end knocked out of alignment on the car, didn't it? I thought when he went off there. There's there some damage to the right yeah. front, yes. Yeah. All, right. All right, let's take a look at some uh, replays here. Oh, he's smoking. I mean, it looks like the engine's gone or something. That's what caused him to oh, go off course. Oh, that's what caused him to go off course. Yeah. Wow. I mean, he just keeps going out through the, the grass. And... Yeah, you lose an oil line or something, and the car is still running, getting back to the, going back to the pit area. So, man, there we'll see where the damage, where he got that damage. Well, and, Robbie cut his teeth, of course, in the desert, but uh, that isn't my idea of uh, desert off-road racing. And here is how Skinner got off course. And he comes right back out beside of Bobby Labate. Bobby goes on by. There we go. Bill Weber, you got the story on Robbie Gordon? Yeah, he may have cut his teeth in the desert, but here in wine country, he's cut a brake line, and he's also lost his power steering. So uh, I imagine his hands are pretty full right about now. Also looking for Dale Earnhardt to pit, and he just pulled out of the pit road now. So the race really begins here for Dale Earnhardt. They had planned to pit pretty early, and this is what they're going to do. Earnhardt's coming in. He's going to get four sticker tires. They're going to add one pound into the front and a pound and a half into the rear. Robbie Gordon now passes Earnhardt here on pit road and Robbie will seek some assistance from his crew. The Goodwrench Chevy here on pit road. They've got the right side tires on. Jack is down. Around to the left side. Chocolate Meyer shoves in the second can of fuel. Earnhardt's car looks pretty good on this side. Can't see the right front damage. The 40 also on pit road. Hood goes up on Robbie Gordon. Earnhardt stalls the car. Earnhardt refires. Gets the push. He's away. 22 seconds. And it appears as if uh, the drivers are thinking that there may be a caution here because of oil on the track. Several drivers are complaining about that, and uh, he hopes that the caution comes out soon. Well, you can bet that Dale Earnhardt's complaining about it, because <laughs> he'd like to see that caution. Down to Jerry. Well, we're hearing from the Robbie Gordon pits it may be a power steering problem, maybe power steering fluid we saw come out of that car as he comes down pit road and now makes the hard left-hand turn right by us and we'll head back to the garage area. His teammate, by the way, Wally Dallenbach, the brake pedal is stuck in the floorboard. He has little or no brakes. He's going to slow the car down totally with the transmission as long as it lasts. Wow. Tough assignment for Wally Donenbach. We are early in the race. And Mark Martin continues to lead here at the Save Mart Supermarkets 300. The NASCAR Ride Along program puts you in the action. Um, can we stop? Why? Well, I'm sorry, but Vladdy really needs to stretch his legs. Well, we're kind of winning. Uh, can't you call a timeout? Doesn't work that way. Oh, that's better. I could pit. NASCAR on ESPN. Come along for the ride. Back at Sears Point Raceway, leaders pitch us beginning here on this road course. Jeff Gordon in, right side tires already on, a chassis adjustment in the right rear. It's full of fuel. Left side lug nuts on. He will be down in the way. Let's check in with Bill Weber. Four sticker tires for Jeff Burton, one round of wedge in the right rear, fuel going in. These guys that get sticker tires have to be very, very careful, very slick when they leave pit road. It takes these tires a little while, about almost three quarters of a lap, to come up the temperature. Leaders are in the hairpin. Coming off turn seven is Mark Martin. And we see Mark is starting to catch some traffic. He's lapping cars in the lap do mount. Now might be a good time for Mark Martin to make his pit stop before he starts lapping cars because once he gets starts lapping cars, they will slow him down considerably. And right now he has good clean racetrack. 
yesterday uh, rain out at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway as a qu practice for the Indy 500 was supposed to begin. They are underway with practice today, and they will have daily reports beginning at 5 o'clock Eastern Time tomorrow on ESPN2. Indy daily reports beginning tomorrow. The leader, Mark Martin, is in the pit area. A great time to pit. He was catching lap cars. Now he can go back on the racetrack, hopefully with some green racetrack, clean racetrack in front of him. Slowly down pit road. 35 miles an hour. It's a long way down to his pit stall. Jerry Punch is waiting on him. Now he arrives. Well, it should be a routine pit stop for Mark Martin. They wanted to actually wait about three or four laps, but because of the early pit stop of Gordon, they had no choice. Martin is in. Terry Labonte is in right behind him. Right side tires on the Kellogg's car. Now left side tires on the Valvoline Ford. No chassis adjustment. Slight air pressure adjustment. Mark is down and away. Darrell Waltrip is in in front of Bill Weber. What a, what a run it's been for Darrell. He's got right side tires on, but not a left side. The fuel is in. He's getting his windshield clean. He's also getting Getting sticker tires. Some guys are taking stuff. Waltrip's on his way back out. The 43 is also off that road change. The right side tire should be four for Bobby Hamilton as well. Bobby Hamilton's crew goes to work on the left side. Changing tires over there. Fuel being put in for Bobby. The leader of the race is Dale Jarrett. It's important to him, of course, because he needs the five bonus points. Every little bit helps. Now the crew has completed the work on Bobby Hamilton and he rolls away. And I think that's the only reason that Dale Jarrett stayed out there when the other leaders came in was to get that five bonus points. There is our leader now working his way. The only thing would hurt Dale Jarrett right now, if the caution yeah. flag were to come out right now in the closed pit road, he would be in trouble because I expect him to make a pit stop the next time by. Right out there and let the caution flag come out. We're going to know in a moment. Yes, indeed. Dale Jarrett heads for the pit area, and so he relinquishes the lead. Now, if the caution comes out right now, he's okay because yep. they already made the entrance into the pits. And so Dale will look for his assigned pit stall. 35 miles an hour is the speed limit coming down here. Jerry Punch, he'll soon be near you. Well, lap 25, exactly what Jeff Bodine did at Watkins Glen, split the race in three parts. As Jarrett pits lap 25, probably will come back in on lap 50. As right side tires are going on, they make a chassis adjustment to the left rear. One round in the left rear, and now tires going on the left side. As lug nuts going on, the car full of fuel, Garrett is down and away. Good Great pit stop. Pit stop. Yep. Great pit stop. Eighteen and a half seconds, and Dale Jarrett rolls back out. And now on the racetrack, we have a battle between Mark Martin and Rusty Wallace. And I think this is for the lead. Rusty had a great pit stop. He moved from, what, fourth up to, I know he was running third, and moved right on the back bumper of Mark Martin on his pit stop. Well, Rusty Wallace was in the lead at one point, but lost it when he came into turn seven too quickly. Here he is moving through turn number six. We're going to follow him down to turn seven and see how things go this lap. Mark Martin is the leader of the race, though, at the moment. Locked up the brakes before. Watch, he closes it right on the back bumper of Mark Martin and trying to go on the outside. <laughs> Close quarters. So a good battle ensues here. You can see that Terry Labonte is running back in third spot. Jeff Gordon is fourth. And Dale Jarrett is fifth. 25 of 74 laps complete. Just about the same interval, Mark Martin leading Rusty Wallace, who is ahead of Terry Labonte. They go up the hill and head for turn two. It's like Kenny Strader, the skull car, up in front of them. He's gotten back in the lead lap being as a result of the pit stops by the leaders, but he's about to go, excuse me, about to go a lap down again. Bill Weber's with Robbie Gordon. And uh, the frustration continues for Robbie Gordon. High hopes here on the road course, but you're behind the wall. What happened? I don't know. I mean, we were, we were really, really fast yesterday. You know, with fast first practice, fast afternoon practice. Uh, I was afraid the car was going to start pushing as the tires went out, so I stuck rubbers in there. We weren't as good as we wanted to be in the first session. But as soon as we were coming in for a pit, we were going to fix that. Uh, lost the power steering going right in the corner, oil down the rear tires. All I could do was just save it as I went off the course straight. Um, I, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm a little frustrated, but 
you know, I got to thank all the guys on the Coors Light team. They were doing a really good job this weekend. We really made a lot of progress because we were faster, some faster on full tanks than we even qualified. So I thought our hopes of, uh, of a podium finish here would have been real good. Okay, Robbie Gordon, very frustrated. Heads off to Indy after here. Joe Nemechek will drive for him next week. Right now, Ken Schrader is on the lead lap, but he's close to going a lap down. He is in 38th position, so 38 cars still on the lead lap. Wow. But this is basically exactly why Mark Martin made that pit stop. Oh, and Schrader goes over to block that move by Mark Martin. Because, let's face it, he, wa he wants to stay in the lead lap. And now Mark, can Mark accelerate off the corner and get by him? No. Well, while these two race and try to get by Ken Schrader, Terry Labonte in third position is closing in. And Mark has to go to the inside, get two wheels off the track, and he still can't get around Schrader. Now he does. And Schrader backs off, rest to goes by. Note the intervals now. It's 5.7 seconds between first and fourth, and then Dale Jarrett is almost 13 seconds back in fifth spot. See Ricky Rudd, 21 seconds behind the leader. Michael Walker. Jeff Burton and Bill Elliott and Rick Down through the carousel, and since they have gotten around Ken Schrader, no traffic to contend with. No traffic, so that's exactly why they made that pit stop. Rather than contend with the traffic and slow down, slow their lap time down, go in the pit, all the other cars are pitting anyway. Here comes fifth place, Jarrett. Looks like there's a the car there. Ricky Rudd. Walter Burton. Elliott. Brett Bodine. Darrell Walter bracing with Ted Musgrave. That's for position. The 19 car, Gary Bradbury, is a lap down. And that's for 11th position, too. He, he is really making a charge towards the front. He sure has. He started 26th, 18th on the 30th, 13th lap, and steadily up to 12th here on the 27th circuit. There is John Andretti, and here comes Bobby Labonte, and he, too, is making good progress. Started 29th, was 26th on lap 13, stayed there till lap 19, and now on lap 27, up to 14th spot. Good run for Bobby. Meanwhile, it continues to be about a car length, car length and a half between Martin and Rusty Wallace. Going out into turn four. And the long sweeping right-hander. It's a Napa field summary showing you where everybody is running at the moment. The numbers in parentheses indicate where they started. These cars are running about 75 miles per hour as they go through turn six, carousel. Third gear, they accelerate. Shift into fourth. Somewhere in the 130, 35 mile per hour range as we slow down to 40 miles per hour. Wow. Oh, uh oh, he's got good Can he get the grip? position. Uh, nope. <laughs> boy, it's so slick down on the inside of the when you when you match that gas and you're in second gear with a low gear rear end ratio anyway, and it really puts that power there and it just simply won't get a bike. No doubt that Rusty Wallace has a very fast race car, and he is just looking for the opportunity to get by Mark, but he may have lost uh, a car length or so on that little incident. Thank you, that corner about 100 miles per hour. Now, back to 112, 13 miles per hour, down, shifting, down to 40 miles per hour once again. And the interval closes again. Here's a battle between Ernie Irvin and Ward Burton. That is for 15th position. Ernie Irvin now up to 15th. Well, after that spin down in turn 11, he and Ken Schrader got together and he dropped back to that uh, 27th position or something. He's moved back up. He was moving up at that time. Gary Coe's got a good run going in the Skittles pocket behind this group. The 17th spot, there he comes. Kyle Petty. Kyle Petty is falling back here. And here comes Earnhardt. He's up in 20th spot now. And Steve Grissom on the inside of Lance Hooper. Oh, three abreast. Jeremy Mayfield on the inside. Whoa. And Hooper is the man that comes out ahead. The 
came out just the way they went in the corner. Lance Hooper, the Hardy Star, was the West to West champion in 1996. He's driving for Greg Saxon. I think we told you last week, broke his foot in a testing accident in Greenville Pickens Speedway. So, road course is not really a good place to run with a broken foot. But he will be back next week at Talladega on Saturday. See Hutch Strickland as he goes by. Red is back in 29th position. He's 50, almost 59 seconds behind the leader. It's Morgan Shepard. Well, Tom Huber. There's Butch Gilliland, the 38 car. He was the, I think that's it, the last winner. Last winner on the West to West Series. Once again into corner number 11, it's Mark Martin leading Rusty Wallace and Terry Labonte not too far behind. There are the top five. 30 laps are now completed after average of 74 in the St. Mark Supermarkets 300. The NASCAR website at www.nascar.com with all the information you seek about any kind of NASCAR racing. Uh, get on board with uh, the Super Highway and find out all about what happened to the truck race yesterday in Portland and at the conclusion of this race, all the statistics that you need to know. NASCAR Online. Well, it remains just about the same, doesn't it? About the same interval between first and second. Yep, Mark Martin leading. Rusty Wallace staying pretty close on him. Hasn't made a major charge here recently. Terry Labonte staying right in there. He might be creeping up just a little bit. The last time by, Rusty Wallace and Mark Martin were the two fastest cars. As Hutch Strickland is back in the pits. Well, he made an early pit stop uh, once before, Bill. Exactly right, Ned. He is just out of sequence, so Hutt is in for fuel, and this time four tires, right sides are on. Now they'll come around, put on the left side tires. Hutt Strickland also using sticker tires on this pit stop, being warned by the NASCAR official they're missing a lug nut on the right front, so they'll have to run back around with the gun and put on the extra lug nut. And now Hutt will be able to return to the race. And he isn't going to be able to go the rest of the distance. I don't think, on this set of tires. I tell you one thing, it looks like you've got a tire out of balance. Boy, that rear bumper is, is uh, loose. Some of our spotters tell us that the rear bumper has been bounced like that. It is loose. And then someone makes some contact with the back of the Circuit City car. And it's going to lap down. So he and Ken Schrader, he's coming up there right behind him, will be racing four positions. And that position will be for 36. And Dale Jarrett, meanwhile, weaves his way through these lap cars. Dale is in fifth spot at the moment, as you can see on your scoring pile on there in the upper left. He made an adjustment on his car during the pit stop, but he's not running as fast to laps now as he was before. There's another Radio Shack Field summary for you. Dale Jarrett, his best finish here at Sears Point was 12th, and he's done that on two different occasions, most recently in this race last year. But he's got a good run going here this afternoon. about the five car being a little bit faster than the rest of the last time by. He was the fastest car of the first six cars. He ran 90.364, and the leader ran 90.030. Ernie Irvin goes by. There is Ward Burton. Here comes Derek Cope out of the corner, Jimmy Spencer, and there is Dale Earnhardt, who is back in 19th position. So he's moved up from his starting spot of 32nd, but he is just not a contender as he usually is on a road course. I'm told that Robbie Gordon's going to repair his car, and he's going back out on the racetrack, trying to get all the points that he can. There he is with Rick and Strep on board. Thank you for bringing that camera back out, Robbie. So the only car that's shown off the track but not officially out of the race right now is Ricky Craven, who has a transmission problem. Jeff Bodine is indeed out of competition. There you see Ricky with his onboard camera as he waits for repairs to be made to the Budweiser Chevrolet. Back on board with Mark Martin looking back on Rusty Wallace. Coming down through turn six, the carousel. They'll accelerate up to turn seven. There he is. Boy, these two cars are awfully, awfully close today. Not a great deal of difference. Their last lap 
speed was almost identical. You had to get down into the thousands to see any difference at all. Yeah, 90.001 for Mark Martin and 90.008 for Rusty Wallace. So they're virtually going the same speed. Now here is Hooper in car number 20, Steve Grissom and Mike Skinner. Hooper again from the Winston West Series, substituting for Greg Sachs. That's 21st, 22nd, 23rd. The only car that's running in the 90-mile-an-hour bracket right now, the only other car that owes those three up front, is Jeff Burton. He is running in sixth position, but he his last lap was a little bit faster than the leaders. We have had no cautions to this point, thus we are at record speed here. The track record is 81.413, and right now they're going more than 87, almost 88 miles an hour, and Bobby Hillen is in trouble. And I see parts flying out of the car. Parts were flying out of the car. Drop down on the right side, Terry. I think it's sway bar. Well, did, is there debris on the racetrack? <laughs> So he thought it was a sway bar. It looked like maybe a sway bar arm or something. Bam, bam, bam. Bam, I can't do that. Like Bring maybe. it in here, park the package. We'll sit here until we get it fixed then. They're going to fix it before they go back on the racetrack. Going in the garage area. So just as I say, we haven't had a caution. Maybe there will be if indeed there are uh, parts and debris on the racetrack, but nothing so far. And Daryl Waltrip tries to go into ninth spot, trying to get around Brett Bodine. And Waltrip is just having a heck of a day. He is having a great day. <laughs> he just picks them off one at a time, driving a very smart, calculated race. Through turn six, he's looking inside of uh, Brett Bodine. Let's see how he handles this long straightaway down to seven. He may have the spot, and by golly, he does. Yeah, he just goes in there high. And Brett backs off, gives him the room. Brett knows that he's a little bit faster right now. So, and Ricky Rudd has a problem. Wow, one of the guys that you uh, think is a favorite when you go to a road course, his car is in pit road and it looks like they're taking it behind the wall. Mm. Well, that's too bad, because he is a great road racer. Jerry, what's going on? Well, it's the old nemesis here on the road course. Apparently, the transmission has come apart inside the tied Ford, so they're going to try to push the car. Ricky was trying to get the car on the pit road, couldn't make the turn, ended up coasting down here. They now, crew has now pushed the car behind the wall behind us. They're going to try to get this car to the garage area, get the transmission fixed, and get him back on the racetrack to pick up some valuable Winston Cup points. But a tough day for a five-time road course winner. And Rudd comes into this race in seventh position in the point standing only one ahead of Dale Earnhardt. We'll be right back. ESPN Speed World today at Sears Point Raceway in Sonoma, California for the St. Mark Supermarkets 300 being brought to you by the legendary Firebird Trans Am from Pontiac. By True Value, official hardware store of NASCAR and garages everywhere. By the XI NASCAR Select, so reliable it's the official battery of NASCAR. And by Firestone, America's tire since 1900. And we welcome those of you who uh, are joining us from ESPN News. We are at Sears Point Raceway, Sonoma, California, and the lead of this race is held by Mark Martin. In car number six, there you see behind him Rusty Wallace and then Terry Labonte. Those are the first three. And Robbie Gordon in car number 40 was in the pits for several laps. He's about 13 laps down, but back out there. And Mark Martin, Robbie has fresher tires. That's a fast race car. Mark just let him go. He didn't want to fool around there with him, being on his back bumper. The 78 car of Tom Hubert has been uh, trying to move up through the field, and sometimes are good, sometimes are bad. And this is one of the bad times. He's trying to get on the inside of Morgan Shepard, and the 78 car, he nails the gas, but he does a 360. Jeff Davis goes by in the 9 car. There goes Sean Woodside, the 07. And speaking of bad times, it's a bad time for Ricky Rudd, Doc. 
Well, the five-time road course winner sits in his tied forward behind the wall. Ricky, uh, he had a great run going, but what happened? Well, we were, you know, we were beat, seemed like. We could run around top five somewhere like that, but just trying to save the tires, wait for the end of the race, but, you know, we were about a fifth-place car today, and all of a sudden, no reason, no excuse, really, just came out of this uh, turn 11 down here in front of the pits, and he grabbed the gears and took off, and all of a sudden, uh, everything in the rear end broke, so it broke a, broke a ratchet or broke the ring and pinion. I'm not really sure which one. It's kind of an unusual thing. I've never had one happen before. You're known to be so easy on equipment. You're sort of the Arthur Murray of road racers here. I mean, you're so easy with the pedals and gears. Any idea? You've never had this happen before? Well, you know, you can't, uh, if the driver wheel hops the car under braking, then you can, you can tear up some stuff in the rear, but you know, it was pretty easy on equipment all day. Nothing really, um, no warnings, no indication or anything. They were just trying to take care of the equipment and snap. But like I said, I've never lost a gear before on a, on a road course, so it's a new one for us. I'm really puzzled. We're watching turn 11 a lot, Ricky. It looks like it's getting slipperier and slipperier. Is it slicker than ordinarily out there? Well, that's where we look. We're losing most of our time. We were giving up to the leaders about three tenths right there in that corner. We just couldn't get through it. I could turn into the corner good, but I couldn't even begin to touch the accelerator. If I did, it just light the tires up through, all, through the, every gear I could grab. So uh, we just missed that combination. Some of the guys have been able to figure it out, but yeah, it seems to be a little slicker than normal there. All right, Ricky Rudd behind the wall. The man who won the inaugural Save Mark 300 here back in 1989. Bob? So Rudd back in the uh, garage area while a great battle is ensuing here on the racetrack. That's Lance Hooper in car number 20 and the 31 of Mike Skinner, and that is a battle for uh, 20 position. Right. So here at Sears Point International Raceway, it is Mark Martin leading, and uh, for those of you uh, watching us on ESPN News, we will see you later and keep you updated. Lance Hooper having a pretty good run here in the 9th, 20th position as we are at Sears Point Raceway, Sonoma, California. 35 laps to go in this 74-lap race. Mark Martin is leading, followed by Rusty Wallace in the Radio Shack. Field summary will show you where everybody else is running. And folks, we have not had a caution flag to this period. No caution flags over halfway. As a matter of fact, Mark Martin was the leader at halfway. He got the money from Gatorade for leading at halfway. This is unheard of. It's Sears Point at a road course. As difficult as they are, no cautions yet. Had a few cars to go off the track, but they got right back on the track and kept going. Had some that have spent some time off the track in the garage area, as Ricky Rudd is now, changing transmission. And Bobby Hillen had a problem. He's off the track. And 32 cars are on the lead lap. Sterling Marlin, the last car on the lead lap. And the 18 car of Bobby Labonte is still on the move. He's up to 13th right now. That's Ted Musgrave, John Andretti. There we see Bobby Labonte in the 18 car. And then Ernie Irvin. All those cars battling for position. saw the 11 car of Brett Bodine just go out of the picture, so they're not that far from 10th spot. And there the 78 is off the course again. Tom Hubert, who was a tire changer for um, the Johnny 30 Benson. car, Johnny Benson, until uh, this week, and he has put on the helmet and got out there and qualified the car well. And the 31 finally got the 20. Uh, Hubert is still on the lead lap, Bob. He's being shown in 28th position, 29th position. And now Mike Skinner moves up into 20th spot. Lance Hooper back to 21st, and there is Steve Grissom in the 22nd spot. Steve Grissom is driving with a broken foot, but he broke his Bristol in the crash, but he and Jeff Bodine. And you watch out, this Robbie Gordon once again is making his way to pit road, so obviously that fix didn't last long. Robbie is 13 laps down to the leaders. Where are the leaders? Up here on the hill somewhere. There they are. There they are. <laughs> and again. Oh, look. Terry Labonte and 
Jeff Gordon looked like they had closed up, and Rusty Wallace looking to speed net. He is off the pace. He's a mile an hour slower than both Labonte and Mark Martin and Jeff Gordon. So Rusty Wallace right now is having some problems. Then you remember before on their first run, his car seemed to give up a little bit more on the long run than uh, Mark Martin and Terry Labonte and some of those that might be happening now. As we watch this battle, as 18 has gotten around the 98 car, Bobby Labonte has taken over the 12th position. Ready back to third. Oh, and the Lance Hooper car is in for trouble. And a lot of smoke coming from the rear end of that car. Whoa, he almost spun there in pit road. Yeah, he's losing some oil or grease or something coming into the pits. So they'll have to be very careful of the drivers when they make their pit stops. That that could be a caution time. Go that was going in turn eleven. If he's lost any fluid on the racetrack, the NASCAR officials quickly will throw out, throw out the caution. Well, Jerry, what's the matter with Rusty Wallace? He is not as fast as he was a few laps ago. Well, Bob, it's not good news for the Rusty Wallace fans. He is on seven cylinders right now at Sears Point, so that problem could get worse and worse today. Goes on. They're going to try to milk this thing to the finish, but seven cylinders still with quite a ways to go on a very demanding road course. But now the caution will come out, and they will get a chance maybe to bring the car on the pit road. A full course caution will give some of these crews a chance to be able to dial these cars in for the final run to the check. Uh-huh. Now the caution is out. Pit road is closed. So now, do they pit on the caution flag? Change tires? Well, they're going to have about 31 laps to go. And uh, that'll be stretching it. They might be able to go that far on the tank of fuel. And, and I'm sure there will be some that'll do it. So, yeah, they'll probably stop. It's our first caution of the afternoon, and it comes past the halfway mark. 43 laps have been completed. We'll see pit stops when we come back. First Point Raceway in Sonoma, California, and the overhead shot is courtesy of Pennzoil. The Pennzoil Copter Cam is providing once again the overhead shots, and the cars are lined up behind the pace car, and before too long, they'll be coming in, or some of them will, for a pit stop. There they come. They're heading down pit road. You see the pace car going on down the racetrack, and the race cars coming into the pits. Right now, there's only one car, and I suppose that car is a lap down that has not pitted. 37 car. Jeremy Mayfield yeah. didn't pit. Yeah, he's a lap down, Benny. Okay. Wow. A parade to the pit area, and things are going to get very, very busy in there. Bill Weber, go ahead. Well, we talked earlier about how exciting it would be on pit road today. Virtually everybody is here, including Jeff Burton. He will get four tires and fuel, the half pound added to the front and a half pound into the rear. He'll make a track bar adjustment on the X-side Ford. Burton's right side is around. They're coming around to the left side, and we go to Dr. Punch. Likewise, right side tires are on Mark Martin's Valvoline Ford. No adjustments to wedge whatsoever. A slide air pressure adjustment. They clean the windshield. Left front tire on. Left rear tire on. Lug nuts fast. It's full of fuel. And Terry Labonte will beat... Well, Labonte will beat Mark Martin out of the pits. Great pit stop by the Kellogg's crew. And I believe that Rusty Wallace has beaten both Mark and Terry out of the pit. So Rusty picks up the position in the pit area. And that is exactly where it, it was. He the one that told us that that's the best place to pick up a position was in the pits. And he did it. Oh, that's right. But uh, obviously it is because Rusty has gone into the lead as a result of good work on in the pit area. Right now, Terry Labonte's ahead on the race track. NASCAR's going to have to sort this out. Okay. It looked like Rusty might have been. we got to sort it out. All right. We shall see then. There's the five. There's the two. We have three lap cars that are ahead of... Uh, and right now, they have the five car in the lead. We'll see what happens when they line up for the restart. In the meantime, with the caution still out and the cleanup continuing from oil on the track, we'll take a break. Backs are brought to you by Quaker State Motor Oil for a clean running engine. 
ordinarily on an oval track, you want to be the last one to come on the pit road. If you can keep your car on the racetrack and maybe catch a caution flag while everyone else pits, you can come in and everyone else is a lap down. Just the opposite here on a road course. You want to be the first one to pit. It's called short pitting. If you come in first, everyone else comes in behind you because you don't lose a lap in the pits. You're the leader or possibly the winner. But you got a short pit within your fuel window. And right up there, that's what that's Richie Gilmore. He is the guy who calculates fuel for Terry Labonte. Now, what he does is figure out how far they can go on a single tank of fuel. Let me show you what his calculations were. Take a look here. The car number five, it's a 74-lap race. They can go 32 laps on each tank of fuel. Subtract 32 from 74 means they pit any time after lap 42. That's their window. They can go to the rest of the way and possibly win the race. And let me show you next door, Mark Martin's window. Now, their calculations are this. 74 laps in a the race, they can only go 27 laps per tank of fuel. They have to pit at lap 47 or later to make it all the way. Folks, they just pitted on lap 43. That will be interesting. Now, how much they'll save, depending on how many caution laps we have here, and how much you'll be able to save on that. You know, pit stops are very, very important. Watch this as Mark Martin's Jacklin. First of all, they have some trouble on the right rear. Butch is all done on the front. We're waiting on the right rear. Finally, the jack man comes around. Now, watch as he drops this jack. He's supposed to drop the jack right under the car, but he it slips out of his hand. It, the handle slipped out of his right hand. He still doesn't have Now he's got to get the jack under the car. Those, that precious second, might have taken him from first to third. All it, in the pits, all it takes is one little slip, one lug nut to fall off, the jack fall out of your hand, and you go from first to third. And indeed, that is where he will restart. And Terry Labonte did beat Rusty Wallace out of the pit. So at the moment, Terry Labonte is the leader. We're still under caution at Sears Point. Beautiful overhead shot of Sears Point Raceway in the Sonoma Valley, about 45 miles north of San Francisco. Now, for some reason, NASCAR has put the six car of Mark Martin ahead of the five and the two. Well, we showed a replay just a moment ago, and the five car crossed the white line. Maybe we were pick maybe we were picking up the white line, the wrong white line. Okay, right there. I guess that's the white line they're going by, and the NASCAR officials have said that Mark Martin crossed that line. What we were going by was the line on up the racetrack, right mm -hmm. there. Man, that boy, is that close, is man. really close, isn't it? Wow, <laughs> that is close. <laughs> Too close to call. Well, we were going green, but we're not now. One that's, more lap of caution. And that's going to help Mark Martin on that fuel situation. Mm -hmm. Gives him one more lap at slow speed. Not burning a lot of fuel here. So Jerry Punch pointed out that uh, he needed to go to lap 47. Well, they're going to complete lap 45. He still might be a, a little bit shy. But. And there's a conversation between Gary Dehart and NASCAR officials regarding the restart positioning. I don't think Terry Labonte has led this race yet today, has he? He, he would have if he'd stayed out front there. But that would certainly be a concern that they would have that, you know, that five bonus points. Well, the computer here is showing that Terry has led a lap, but it could have been the one yeah. that is in contention right now. Right. I think it was while he was out front going around there, but do... Uh, it should have been Mark Martin's lap. Mm -hmm. In any case, uh, while they continue to have their discussion, we will take another break here at Sears Point Raceway. 45 out of 74 laps now completed. Point Raceway under caution. And the question is, who is the leader of the race? And where is the line that they determine who's leading the race? Well, I guess they're saying that this line just before the bridge is the line that decides who will be leading the race. And these cars are right there. Roll it and we'll see. There's Labonte's moving. He moves out and now Mark moves. And it's just so difficult to tell. Let's try a different shot. There goes Mark. Labonte's moving. And it's close. Yes, it is. But NASCAR. See, this is the white line. Here's the white line we were talking about a moment ago. And obviously, Labonte was in front at that line. And that's what I thought that was yeah. the one that decided it, but obviously it's not. But that's already past pit road. All right, Jerry. 
What they're telling us down here, guys, this line right here to my left, that that's the white line that they use to determine who exits the pit first. In fact, who is the lead instead of the yellow line. And the ladies at the end of pit road down here, those two ladies standing there are the ones who made a determination. They're the ones that said that it was six, five, and then two. Well, the green flag is out, and Rusty Wallace was very, very loose as he came up the hill. Well, that's one reason, because the 24 car got in the back of him, I think. They tell about, they say that Rusty's on seven cylinders, so obviously he's under power, but he doesn't look like he's under power there. No, he comes up that hill pretty good. Oh, he moves right up on Terry Labate. Now, the 37 car of Jeremy Mayfield is on the lead lap, but just barely. Just on the tail end of the lead lap. He is in 31st position. He'd like to see another caution flag before they get back to the start finish line if he'd stay out in front. If, but I, Mark Martin had turned seven because Jeremy, I don't think, pitted. And Rusty, we see him getting a little sideways. I don't think Jeremy pitted, so his tires are worn. There goes Jeremy. Mark looks like he's on the inside. Yes, he is. There goes Terry Labonte. Now, this could help Mark. Watch him pull away. Watch this acceleration as Mark just pulls away from the five car. And Rusty's going to have to stay behind the 37 car, but the 37 pulled away from him, so that was not a problem. Now, Rusty moves back a little bit closer on him, but he'll have to stay behind him, at least through the S's. So, Mark Martin will get a long way ahead of Rusty Wallace and Jeff Gordon. 28 laps to go in this race. Off of corner 10, down the straightaway, and headed toward turn 11. And even now, Rusty Wallace is not going to be able to uh, pass Jeremy Mayfield. Let's take a look at the Bud Race recap. Mark Martin has led 42 of the 46 laps, so he has picked up the five bonus points for leading the most laps. Four lead changes, one caution period lasted four laps. The average speed is 78.4 miles an hour. Here are the drivers that have led. Mark Martin, Rusty Wallace, and Dale Jarrett. And as far as cars out of the race, they include Lance Hoover, Gary Bradbury, and Jeff Bodine. Everybody else is still out there. Must have got up on the bumps there. Here's Might Jeff. Cost him, Jeff. Gordon trying to go on the inside of him. Ooh. <laughs> Didn't quite make it. While Dale Jarrett and uh, Bill Elliott are hanging right in there, too, right behind Bill. Uh, Bill Jeff. Yeah, Bill Elliott had a great pit stop. Came out in sixth place. He was running about eight. And Russell oh. Wallace moves over and yep. lets Jeff Gordon go by. And he realizes there. that he is holding up the whole line of cars. But now he's letting Jarrett go by. There goes Elliott. Burton. And we uh, see the smoke yeah. coming out of the Miller Life Ford. He's got serious problems now. Looks like he may be headed for the pits as smoke pours out of the Miller Lite Ford and Rusty Wallace is in trouble, Jerry. Well, Rusty's words are, guys, I just blew it up. He said, let's load it up and go home. Mm -hmm. My goodness. Just try to nurse it back to the pits. So the driver who has won more road course races than any other active driver is about to retire. Ever see Rusty Wallace? Look at how that car gets off the corner, off the ground as he hits those strips. He could have revved that thing on up there when that wheels got off the ground, Benny. He could have revved that engine up pretty high there. So Good he's have. got the gloves off. He's taking the helmet off and calling it a day. Rusty Wallace out of competition. Watch him drive it with his knee. Mm -hmm. Hold the steering wheel with his knee. Although we had reported earlier that a cylinder had gone away, and so that's probably what caused the engine to blow. Some parts got loose in there as we watched Ernie Urban and John Andretti race. That's the battle for 12th position. Andretti has 12th, and Ernie Urban wants it. That's what's the great thing about a race. There's always somebody got something that somebody else wants. <laughs> that's pretty good. Whether it be real estate or car or whatever. Whatever, exactly right. <laughs> See the Walter brothers there racing together. Racing for seventh spot, Michael and Daryl. There they go. Looks like Daryl might have him. And Andretti might have Musgrave. Musgrave. Nope. Well, nope. Ted's having a pretty good run. He's 11th at the moment. And Daryl didn't get Michael either. <laughs> Bobby Labonte now has worked his way up to 10th. 
Uh oh, oh, that's the wrong way. Somebody's going the Mike wrong way. <laughs> I think it's Mike Wallace in the spam car. Mm. Now let's go. Are you okay? Clear. He's just got to find a place he can turn that thing around. That's up in turn seven. Very finding a wide spot. He was running 24th and he lost about six or seven spots as those cars eased by him while he was sitting there in the middle of the racetrack. Yeah, he's going to be back to about 29th position, the last car on the lead lap. He hustles down through the S's, and Bill Weber is with Rusty Wallace. Well, I know you're disappointed. What happened? I overread the thing about uh, halfway through the race, and, and I must have tagged the valve. It started missing after that, and it was running on about seven and a half cylinders, which was still okay. I was able to keep up and maybe even be a little faster, but uh, then with about two laps ago, it just broke. They lost the whole entire cylinder then and started seizing up and so had to shut it down. You got really high in one of the turns out there coming off the ripple strips. That Was that, did that contribute to it? No, that wouldn't have nothing to do with it. What happened, I just, uh, I got in real deep, real hot, missed a shift and got the motor way up there. And it was my own fault. That's about it. You yeah. thought that... You thought this was going to be your day, didn't you? Well, the car's fast as lightning. It was just flying. And early in the race, it took the lead and got down to turn 11, uh, turn 7 too hot. I mean, I made two big mistakes today that I normally don't make. Running off the course right there and when I had to, to, probably the best car out there for sure. And then uh, over revenue things. So sometimes you got a good day, sometimes you got bad. It was all my fault today. I had to go home and uh, super back up. Okay, and he's got a good qualifying spot already for Talladega next week. Hut Strickland has just exited the pit area from being in because of a right front that was flat. As we see Mark Martin leading Terry, Terry Labonte still, as we see Hutch Strickland go out on the track. Rusty Wallace mentioned that he might have been faster as a result of running on what he calls seven and a half mm -hmm. uh, uh, cylinders. The reason that it might have been a little bit faster, he didn't have as much power off the turns. As the track gets slicker, he was able to get a little better traction coming off the turns. Hmm. Look how close Terry Labonte is now to the leader, Mark Martin. Terry Labonte has won two road course races, both of them at Riverside, one in 84, one in 85. He has never won here at Sears Point. But I, he is, his his Bobby, best finish was a second back in 92. But he's a serious contender here today. Yes, he is. There's old D.W. He was able to get by Michael. He has moved into seventh spot, as you see on the pylon. How about that? Great run for Darrell Walker today. Good battle in front of him there as Jeff Burton and Bill Elliott go at it for the fifth and sixth places. Bill Elliott has the fifth spot right there in the 94 and the 99. Fifth and sixth. Here's Burton looking inside. He may outbreak Elliott. And I believe he's going to get the position. Well, let's see if he can get traction off the turn. Yep. Yes, he did. About that, yeah. Bill Weber is uh, down in uh, Hutt Strickland's pit area with the tire that just came off Hutt's car. Yeah, you don't want to open your trunk and find this one as your spare. This was uh, this is what happens when the brake duct rubs against the inside of your tire. It uh, it doesn't last too long. You have to come in and get a new one. So uh, disappointment for Hutt Strickland uh, had to come in and get a tire and. Uh, Frustrating day. We talked earlier about how you have to have a perfect setup when you come to a road course. There's really no margin for error here. And obviously that cost hot. So Mark Martin has about a five-car length advantage on Terry Labonte. Jeff Gordon is running third, then Dale Jarrett and Jeff Burton. Continues to lead here at Sears Point with Terry Labonte running in second position. Mark Martin eligible for $30,400 bonus in Utical money, and he is looking for his first win since Charlotte in October of 1995. He didn't win a race in 1996. He's in the lead at the moment. Great battle between Michael Walter, Brett Bodine, and Bobby Labonte. Ed Musgrave, John Andretti, Ernie Irvin, Ward Burton, Jimmy Spencer. Dale Earnhardt. Jimmy Spencer, a good run. He's up in 15th position, and Dale Earnhardt is racing with him, and Jimmy has a very clean race car. Not very many uh, marks on it. No dings on the car today. He started in 25th position and has improved himself by 10 with 22 laps to go. Dale Earnhardt started 32nd, of course, so he too has passed several cars. 
The fifth place car is the 99 of Jeff Burton, and Bill Weber has a report from his pit area. Well, you have to be good, and you have to be lucky to win here at Sears Point. I want to show you the right front, check that, the left front tire that Jeff Burton started this race on. The tire looks fine, but come around here and look at the rim. He rubbed with Robbie Gordon, and it literally peeled the rim away. You can see what the crew thinks about it. Ouch. But it did not do any damage other than peeling the rim away. So Jeff was very lucky in that situation. He's in a brand new car. A brand new car that they brought here. And uh, you can see here that the valve stem has been broken away as well. So Jeff was very lucky. Now in that new car that he's driving, there's a lot of Mark Martin in that car because when they came here a year ago, Jeff and Mark worked together. In fact, those cars, the 6 and the 99, are about as similar as they can be without the same guy driving it. And one other similarity, one other similarity they have is that Jeff Burton cannot reach the finish either. He can only go about 26 laps on a full load of fuel. Mm -hmm. And we have a full course caution. The 81 of Kenny Wallace is up in the tire barrier. We see him moving around in there, so hopefully he's okay. We also see some damage, pretty serious damage to the right front. We've... Car is up in the tires on there, the hill. There's the crew watching TV trying to figure out what happened to the car. They don't see that. They won't see this. Wow. He had quite a ride up there, I would guess. Let's take a look at it. There he goes off course. Down in the carousel. Wow. Hmm. Just shot straight up in there. And looks like he might have locked up the rear brakes going in the corner, started the thing wheel up in, and just had to back off the brakes. And so for the second time this afternoon, the caution flag comes out. This is going to bunch up the field and allow them to make pit stops. Once again, we'll take a break while they get bunched up and be back in just a moment with more. The second time here at Sears Point because Kenny Wallace has run up the hill into the tires. As you can see, he is okay and looking underneath the car. Well, he's trying to figure out some place to put the hook. See the big hook there? Kenny wants to put the hook around there and not hurt anything, so he's the guy trying to figure out. This occurred can... as they came into turn number six. Right, and they're running about 80 miles per hour as they go in the corner. And he goes in and just locks up. I guess he'd start hopping the rear wheels. He locks up the brakes. The left front just goes, car goes straight. When the front starts sliding, the car just goes straight. And watch this impact as he goes in the tire barrier. That guy was quick on that yellow flag, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. <laughs> Boom. Heavy contact. Ernie Irvin has come in the pit, so has Bill Elliott. Mark Martin must be going to gamble. Mark must be going to gamble these caution flags that he can make it. Apparently, Bill Elliott had slid off the track or something. He had dropped from fifth place back to 14th place. So he must have gotten off track somewhere, lost a lot of ground. And so once he got that far back, he decided, well, I better come in and get me some new tires and top off the fuel, be sure I got enough to go the rest of the way. Right side work is complete on Ernie Irvin's car. Now they're in uh, uh, Kyle Petty's pit along with Bill Elliott. Crew's going over to the left side of Kyle Petty's car. Bill Weber has more on the 94 car. Yeah, Bill Elliott had radioed in. He felt like something came loose in the drive shaft. So they've got a crew member underneath that car trying to check that out. But he had a vibration, thinks it may be something in the drive shaft. Okay, so that's what caused him to lose those positions out on the racetrack. The caution was a blessing for him. Ben Wallace getting back in his car as the wrecker gets hooked up to the square D Ford number 81. And Jerry Punch has more on the strategy being employed here by the leaders. We showed you the calculations a little bit ago in the Valvoline pits. Now, it's going to be very, very close. They think now, based on their most recent calculations and the caution laps, that they can make it. They had a long discussion with Jack Roush and Steve Mill on top of that wagon right there about the possibility of making a pit stop. Steve said, we, we sort of wanted to pit, but we wanted to make everyone else think we had to pit, and they did not come on pit road. However, the car number five can make it, and some concern in the 24 pit. I talked to Michael Landis, Jeff Gordon's gas 
man, because of some spillage on that last pit stop, Landis' calculations say that the 24 car can make it to lap 72 and a half. Folks, mm. it's a 74 lap race. <laughs> yeah, that ain't enough. <laughs> There's Jeff Gordon, and right behind him is Dale Jarrett as they uh, continue to clean up here after Kenny Wallace's accident. Unlike ESPN Speed World coverage of the Save Mart Supermarkets 300 from Sears Point Raceway, Sonoma, California. Being brought to you by Foster's Lager, Australian for beer. By the more than 1,525 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. And by Haviland Formula 3 Motor Oil. Add more life to your car. We remain under caution here at Sears Point. Let's take a look at a Radio Shack field summary here as the cars continue to circulate at reduced speed. Mark Martin, Terry Labonte, Jeff Gordon, Dale Jarrett, and Jeff Burton are running in the top five with Daryl Waltrip running in sixth position and his brother right behind him in seventh. And Brett Bodine is eighth. Bobby Labonte up to ninth now. Ted Musgrave tenth. Bill Elliott being shown with eleventh. We understand that they're going to change the transmission on the McDonald's Ford number 94. And John Andretti there being shown in 12th. Ernie Irvin 13th. Ward Burton 14th. And Jimmy Spencer 15th. 16th through 30th this afternoon. Earnhardt's back there in 16th. Morgan Shepard, Kyle Petty, Mike Skinner, Steve Grissom, Wally Dallin back. Sterling Marlin, Bobby Hamilton, Dave Marcus, Johnny Benson, Jerry Cope, Mike Wallace, Butch Gilliland, Mike Hubert, and Kenny Wallace was credited for 30th for the laps he's run, but I don't think he'll finish that high this afternoon. Well, a la Dale Earnhardt at Daytona, he got back in the car. We're talking about Kenny Wallace, and he drove the car to pit road. As you can see, the drivers that are currently 31st through 44th with just four cars out of the race. Now, the rundown that we have just shown you was the last full lap under green that they ran. We've had a few cars that have made pit stops since then, so that would jumble them up a little bit. Not any of the leaders, though. All those up in the top ten, none of them made pit stops. In fact, I don't think any in the top uh, 13 or 14 made pit stops. Let's go down to Jerry Punch, uh, who has a story on Jeff Gordon. Those of you at home may be wondering why, if the calculations here in the Gordon Pit say they're going to run out of fuel in lap 72 or 72 and a half, why they wouldn't pit. Well, let me explain why the calculations can sometimes be misleading. Look behind me. There's a puddle area on pit road now. The gas man did his job. When he was trying to pack the fuel cell, he got gas back out the dry brakes. Now, that gas that comes out the dry brake goes onto the ground. Basically, when you bring the can back and weigh it to see how much the car took, the scale doesn't know whether that gas went in the car or on the ground. So the scale says that you took more gas than you really took, which means your fuel mileage is down. They really think the car can make it all the way, but based on calculations, they would only go to 72 and a half. That's why they didn't come on the pit road. Okay, similar situation down here in the 99 pit. Jeff Opel is their fuel mileage specialist, and he's been working back here with this calculator. He could probably balance my checkbook. Originally, they didn't think they'd be able to make it, but since the caution has come out and they are able to use less fuel under caution, now they think they've got a good possibility to reach lap 74. He may run out after the checkered flag, but these guys have offered to push him to victory lane if that's necessary. And here, as Ned said, the uh, 94 car of Bill Elliott is back in the garage area, and they're going to try to repair the transmission. As a matter of fact, a record just pushed that car to uh, the garage area. Well, for the second race in a row, the true value man of the race, as a result of his win at Martinsville, is Jeff Gordon. He ran his 23rd career NASCAR Winston Cup event at that time and registered his sixth top five finish of the season. True value is donating $1,000 to the Leukemia Society of America on behalf of Jeff, whose dedication to that group continued to grow after his car owner, Rick Hendrick, was diagnosed with leukemia. Well, the lights atop the pace car, we understand, are out, and we are set to go back to racing. And there will be 17 laps to go when they take the green flag. You might wonder how slow they are going under this caution. The last lap was at 34.857 miles an hour. So they'll move that up by about 60 here in just a matter of moments. 
weaving back and forth, back and forth, trying to get all the debris off the tires. Remember this, Jeff Gordon says it cost him the victory year last year when he didn't clean those tires well. That's exactly right. He was in the lead and didn't clean the tires, and when the green flag came out, he spun the tires and got past. Well, here they come into quarter number 11 now, and the pace car will continue straight down the drag strip, and the others will take the green flag, and we will be back to competition here in the Save Mart Supermarket 300. And the green is out. Here we go. Darrell Walter already trying to work on the 99 car of Jeff Burton. Well, sixth place, Jeff Burton and fifth as they come up the hill. shot here for the Pennzoil copter cam as they come up the hill now. They peak right there and start downhill now to turn four. And when you see that mountain on the right, that's the mountain we're talking about moving. That was a mountain last year. They have moved it someplace else to, to give the fans better visibility around this racetrack. We probably see more on this road course than any other road course I've ever been to as far as the fans are concerned. And it's going to get better. There's the carousel. Uh -oh. oh, John Andretti is spun. John had made a pit stop, I believe, and he's in 20, was in 22nd position, but he's going to be back to the back of 27 cars still being shown on the lead lap, so it's cost him four or five positions. And here they come through corner number 11. It's still Mark Martin showing the way. Labonte right on his heels. Turn number seven that they came off of there and headed down through the S's. And right there, they're running about 135 miles an hour. That's about where Bobby Labonte hit the other day in, in qualifying. Through turn 10, about 100 miles an hour. Now they accelerate to 125 miles an hour before they slam on the brakes, downshift, and get down to 40 miles per hour. 3,500 in second gear. Boy, Gordon got awful close to hitting Labonte there as they went around the corner. Take a look at what happened to John Andretti up on top of the hill last lap. Goes in the corner. I, I see Kyle Petty make some contact with the rear, and around goes John. Like they were trying to be three deep there going into that corner and two deep. Yeah, the, the other car was the 07 of uh, Sean Woodside. Look at this. Oh, Gordon may have Labonte now. They go into the corner side by side, and Dale Jarrett tries to take advantage also, but Gordon has second spot. Turn four, a good spot to pass if you can get the jump on the guy coming off of 3A. I think Terry slipped a little bit in 3 or 3A1, Vinny, and cost him a little bit of momentum, and Gordon was right there to take advantage of it. Well, they almost bumped bumpers uh, back in corner number 11. But let's take a look at it again as they come up the hill here. Uh, this is turn one. 1A, one actually. They go up the hill, oh, and yeah. there he gets sideways right there. Lost his momentum. And look at him smoke the brakes as he tries to get into, get his angle right to get into. He never can get the angle right, so he's not able to get on the accelerator like he wants to off the corner, which lets Jeff Gordon get a run on him. Now Dale Jarrett closes in on Labonte for third position. All this happening behind Mark Martin, who has lengthened his lead because of this. Kenny Wallace is watching from the sidelines, as his brother Rusty Wallace is also doing. Kenny was fitting out in Gilligan's Island. All the cars can't fit on pit road, so some of them got to come out in the infield, and that's called Gilligan's Island. Well, there's some great racing going on back in the pack for positions for, from about 10th back through 15th or 20th. Ricky Rudd is not one of them in the car number 10. He was in for a transmission change, so he's eight laps down. Bernie, Ir Bernie Irvin after making that pit stop, trying to work his way back to the front. Right behind Derek Pope in Skittles' car. 71 and Marcus is also in a battle for position here with Kyle Petty. Here's Brett Bodine and Michael Waltrip and Bobby Labonte. Seventh, eighth, ninth. There's 10th and 11th and 12th and 13th and it goes on and on. <laughs> Down 
through the carousel once again. Turn number six, Michael Waltrip holding on to that position, which is eight. Now let's see if Bobby can make a move here on the straightaway headed for turn number seven. Oh, looks like Derek Koch got off in the uh, grass there, got wheels off the racetrack, and the yellow flag was waving there for the corner worker. Yeah, that was, that was a corner flag. That was not a course flag. But man, look at the spots that Derek is losing. Mike Walsh tries to go by the 91 car. So good racing indeed going on throughout the pack here, but at the moment, Mark Martin is the leader over Gordon, Labonte, Jarrett, and Burton. We go in the Save Mart Supermarkets 300, the ninth race of the season for the NASCAR Winston Cup Series. And another race comes to you this coming Saturday. It's the rescheduled rained-out event at Talladega. We begin it all Saturday at 1 o'clock Eastern Time with NASCAR Today on ESPN2. And then we'll pick up our live coverage of the Winston 500 at 1.30 Eastern Time this coming Saturday here on ESPN. The high banks of Talladega Super Speedway. Well, before we went to break, we saw that Derry Cope had spun, and that's how he did it. Yeah, Derek Cope goes around, a little help from Ernie Irvin in the back of the skill of Pontiac, and tell you what, Derek does a 360, continues on, but he did lose several positions. He's back now in 24th position. And we got a good battle for 12th position going on between Jimmy Spencer and Dale Earnhardt, and Boyd Earnhardt has come up through after a 32nd place start. He's bouncing that thing off of those banks down on the inside or the curbing or whatever you want to call it. So, don't call them. so there are some ripple strips in some places. How about that one car, Morgan Shepard? Yep. Took a provisional, didn't he, to start the race? Yep, running 15th now. And there's the 31 car of uh, Mike Skinner also involved in this little battle. There he is behind Morgan Shepard, the leading rookie contender in the series this year. And here comes another Radio Shack deal summary and look at her. <laughs> driving the wheels off of it. And so is Jimmy Spencer. All these guys, really. That's a shortcut didn't work. It was a little bit of a long cut that time. By the way, Bill Elliott has completed repairs on his car and is back on the racetrack. Morgan just about, about five the left corner. down. Yeah. A little bit of damage on the front end of that one car, but Morgan Shepard is in 14th spot. 27 cars still on the lead lap as we reach the conclusion of this event. And it looks like a John Andretti and another... Jeremy. Ooh, car number nine. Is that Jeff Davis? I believe it is, in the number nine car. They have crashed outside of turn number and 11. There's a fire. And a fire in Jeff well, Davis's car. He's trying to start the car. That was yep. the fire in the exhaust, but it doesn't seem to be wanting to go very well. well it looks it? like he's rolling, but John Andretti isn't. This will bring out the caution, no doubt. Yep. Helping the fuel mileage on those guys that were running close. There is Jeff Davis, who grew up in Carmel, Indiana, but came out here and has been running some uh, Winston West races. Here's how it occurred. There we see the 98 car. He's on the inside of the 77. And he comes off the corner. And here he's going to come off and boom, he and the 9 are going to make some serious contact. Mm I guess John felt like we, once he got by the 77 that the racetrack was clean, he could go back up against the outside retaining wall, but unfortunately the nine car of Jeff Davis was there. So Jeff Davis comes in as the caution flag once again comes out for the third time this afternoon here at Sears Point. Welcome back to Sears Point. You can see in the distance the Golden Gate Bridge. That's about an hour drive, hour south of here at Sears Point Raceway. And our overhead shots are courtesy again of the Pennzoil Copter Cam. 
Tonight it might be a three-hour drive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's going to be a little bit of a traffic jam getting out of here because record attendance here at this race today. We are under caution for the third time because of an accident involving John Andretti and Jeff Davis. Let's take a look at it again. Well, they come into turn 11. You see the RCA Ford get down on the inside of Bobby Hill in the car number 77. The nine car is up there, and John Andretti accelerates off the turn, accelerates right out into the nine car, and Bob, I, don't, I think their wheels sort of locked together when they came off of that turn, and the, he couldn't cut the car any further. Let's see. Right there, the wheels mm -hmm. get together, and John Andretti couldn't turn the steering wheel. Pretty serious damage to both of those cars. John Andretti finally got going and continued around the racetrack. Now he has made it to the pit area. Davis drove to his pits immediately. So, third caution again uh, out. Cleanup is continuing there at turn number 11. We're a little more than 10 laps away from the finish of this race. All under caution, we're going to sneak in another quick break. We want to bring you as much green flag racing as we possibly can, so we'll be right back. Timing, just as they come out of corner number 11 and look for the green flag, they get it. We're back to racing with nine laps to go. Kenny Wallace is back on track. He came into the pits. They sheared away all of the uh, broken sheet metal, and he's back out there. Morgan Shepard a little sideways coming up the hill. A bit of bumping coming up here. There are several cars to uh, bump a little bit, and that's uh, close to the field. He's had just going to get around that corner. Somebody coming in there a little bit faster. Ooh, Jeff Gordon got a little loose there, and so did Terry Labonte. Oh, look at Dale Jarrett go to the inside of Terry Labonte. Tried to get the position, couldn't do it. But on the carousel, it's not a good place, I don't think, DJ. No, he decided, I got to get back to the inside quick. But he's going to try to get on the inside or the outside, whichever it is. <laughs> the 99 and the 17 right there also here comes Jarrett to the outside in turn seven can't make the pass now watch him cross over maybe and get the nope couldn't do it position is everything get off the corner is everything Right now, Labonte having struggled to keep up with the first two cars of Martin and Jeff Gordon. You know, in the first lap of the last restart, Terry Labonte had problems. Jeff Gordon got high on, on that restart, but after that, his car seems to come in a little bit. The tires come in a little bit better. And look at Daryl Walter, who's running in six spots. How about that? He's having pretty, a great day. Pretty serious damage to the right front of Daryl's car. He's made contact with something. Yes, Brett Ludine there running in seventh place. He's having a good day. Daryl's got his best finish of 19 97 going. His best finish to this point was a ninth at Martinsville. He is now sixth. Good for me, Yep. He's a good road racer. Sure is. Five wins all at Riverside. Oh, he's and got a position on the 99. Here he goes. Now the 99 has the position going into that left-hand turn. Now they go 3A and down the hill to 4. If Darrell really gets off his corner, maybe he can dive on the inside. No, can do it. Jeff Ford's close up pretty close to the leader, Mark Martin, if we watch Darrell. The 17th car, fall of 99. Let's give a hats off to uh, Brett Bodine also, who's running in 7th position. Good run for him. He's having a great day. Qualified 5th and... And just stayed up in the top ten just about all day. And he has his best finish going also. His best finish to this point, tenth at Bristol. And look at Jeff Gordon. He is there. Has he been saving something all day long? Wouldn't surprise me. That's his style. He's closing in. Turn 11 seems to be his favorite place to try to overtake the six car. This is turn 10. Charge down to 11. Is he going to try to outbreak him? Look at the nose of that car dive and he slams on the brake. Can't do it this time. He's in close. Mm -hmm. Mark will accelerate off the turn. Didn't pick, well, about a car length he picked up coming off the turn. 
Mark Martin has gone 42 races without a win. But during that time, he's had 17 top fives, 40%. 69% of the time, he's finished in the top 10. And he has led 50% of the races. And in that time, he has also won 10 Bush Grand National events. 11 Bush Grand National events. Jerry? And Bobby has won three times on road courses, but all three have come at Watkins Glen. He has never won at Sears Point. He came so close here two years ago. Remember, two laps to go in turn six. He slipped a little bit to the middle of the groove. Earnhardt made the move and got his first ever and only road course victory. I asked Steve Neal a moment ago, what about it in the final lap of the season? I can tell you one thing, Doc. With two to go, Mark Martin is going to be hugging that inside groove big time in the carousel. Well, we're getting down to it here. And the 99 car of Jeff Burton just drove off the course, we understand. But Darrell Walter up into fifth spot. Well, let's see what happened to, to Jeff Burton. He was running in fifth, and there he is. Apparently got in there a little bit too hard, put the brakes on. Almost the same point yep. that Kenny Wallace crashed. Yep, but he wasn't going as fast, and he was able to get it back on track, but he lost several positions. In fact, he dropped back to about 11. Once again, headed for turn number 11. And Terry Labonte, Dale Jarrett has joined this race. This is a great battle. Just six laps going across the line. Four cars, nose to tail. There's DW back there in fifth place. About three seconds behind. Or was actually five seconds behind the leader. Three seconds behind the fourth place. Ward Burton, Ernie Irvin, and Dale Earnhardt are all nose to tail. And they are battling for 12, 13, 14, 11, 12, 13, 14. Earnhardt's in 13. Earnhardt smoked that right front, and there's some Whoa. contact between the 28 and 22. Got him loose and took advantage. Ernie moved to the inside. And made the pass. <laughs> All right, now headed toward turn seven once again. The lead quartet. Still separated each by about a car length and a half or so. Here comes Ted Musgrave and Michael Walter and Jeff Burton. Was dropped back to 10th position. Kyle Petty now. He is up to 14th, having passed Jimmy Spencer. The fastest lap was turned by Dale Jarrett in fourth position. And we've said it many times before. It's especially oh, we see the smoke in the right front. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was watching something else. <laughs> Kyle, Kyle Petty went in the corner and smoked the right front tire, and I saw that. I was say something. I was going to say, catching somebody and passing him are two different things, especially on a road course. Yes. Now, let's, what were you watching here, B.B.? Watch this. Kyle oh, Petty. Yeah. Yeah, it was a front tire. He was about to run all over Dale Earnhardt. Yes, Boy, he was. Got that thing slowed down just in time. And he gives a whole new meaning to the term Hot Wheels. <laughs> to turn five. Up down to the carousel, turn six. 75 miles an hour. Now they accelerate. Let's go back up to 135, 40 miles an hour before you slam on the brakes and start downshifting again. Just a little more than four laps to go, and we don't want to jinx him, but we're beginning to wonder now if the long, dry spell for Mark Martin is about to end. He has certainly looked good all race long and continues to do so. And Jeff Gordon, this would be a very sweet victory for him. He lived here in Vallejo about 20 miles away until he was, what, 13 years yeah, old? Yeah, he was born here and uh, moved to Indiana only because the state of California wouldn't allow him to drive sprint cars. He's uh, going for three in a row. He won the last two races at Bristol and Martinsville, Jeff Gordon. He's that medal for from fifth on back. Ernie Irvin now has 
leads up to 11. Check the interval on everybody as they cross the line. It's about a half second lead for Mark Martin. Almost a two and three quarter second lead over Dale Jarrett. And one through ten are separated by about ten seconds. really are getting, doing a very good job getting around this road course. 3,400 pound cars with just 11, 12 inch rubber on them. This is what we used to see in the Trans Am cars. The cars that weigh 2,000 pounds with wide rubber on the car. And here's a slow car in front of these leaders. Is it going to play into it up in turn seven? No. Nope. Get out of the way. John looks up. Moves over in the 07 car and lets him go by. You see Kenny Wallace is very, very slow. Jeff Gordon's best finish here at Sears Point up to now, third in 1995, two years ago. This is his fifth race here, and there is the Kenny Wallace car. He's just trying his best not to get in the way. Looking at Ernie Irvin, I thought he may be able to get to the inside of Jeff Burton there coming off the corner, but couldn't. Battle for 10th. Burton is in 10th. Irvin in 11th. That's an example of how important track position is. When he went off track, he got back there. He was running faster than this pack of cars. He was running as fast as the leaders were. And then he got off track, so he's with this pack of cars. So he's running the same speed that they're running, which is a little bit slower than the leaders are running. But you, the track position is so important. Here's Ernie going to try it on the outside. I don't think that'll work. Mm -hmm. But you got to try everything to get this weight in the race. See that Jeff Gordon lost a half second that time to the leader, Mark Martin. Yep. And the interval between first and tenth is now over 11 seconds. Working seven to second lap. Boy, aren't you all over? He's Jeff Burton. Jeff Burton's all over that car in front of him. Quite as close, but pretty close. Yeah, now got him. What a great move that yeah. was. Boy, he just shot that thing right in there. That hole was not there long, but he timed it perfect. Ernie moves into 10th spot. As we watch this, Kenny Schrader's back in the pit with another right front tire plant. Now we see a battle between the Burton brothers, Jeff and Ward, right behind Ernie. And now to the leaders once again. When they hit the stripe, there will be two laps to go. There's Martin, there is Jeff Gordon. And the interval doesn't seem to be shrinking very much. No, I don't think it is. Now, you might wonder, well, has, has Gordon been just sort of cooling his tires here for these last couple of laps to run? There's DW coming around. He's out there by himself in fifth place. He likes that spot. Nobody racing him. Right now. Yeah, there's a great battle. Mm -hmm. All those cars you see racing for position. There we see Bobby Labonte going inside of Brett Bodine took over the sixth spot. For those of you watching ESPN News, you now join the last lap and a half of this 300-kilometer race at Sears Point Raceway. Oh, it's and Bobby, and Bobby Labonte is spinning. Oh, he just moved into sixth place. Oh, I don't think he's done a lot of damage to the Interbate State Battery Chevrolet, but he's lost a lot of positions. Meanwhile, the leader is Mark Barton, and there is his advantage over Jeff Gordon as they go down through turn number six, the carousel, hit the straightaway that connects six and seven. Running in third place is Terry Labonte, and fourth is the 88 of Dale Jarrett. Now, watch what happens to Bobby Labonte. Ooh, he missed huh? a shift. Yep, he missed a shift and just got him, his rhythm messed up, and around he goes. Going to third gear there and just missed it. So that moves the 11 car of Brett Bodine up in Ted Musgrave and Ernie Irvin are having a battle for eighth position. 
There is Musgrave in the 16 and Urban in the 28. Here are the top two as they hit corner number 11. And when they hit this drive this time, they'll get the white flag. And Gordon appears to be moving in just a little bit, Bob. Could be a good last lap here. Here they come toward the start-finish line. And the white flag is showing. We've got one more lap, 2.52 miles to go. Wow. Remember last year, Mark Martin looked like he had this thing won, got down to the carousel, slipped, and Dale Earnhardt got by. Now he's got to get around this course, make every shift, hit every breaking point. By the way, Bobby and Bobby dropped back to the 18th. To the 21st position, left car, lead left. Not, not the last car, but the 21st position. To turn five, up the carousel, turn six. This is right where Mark Martin last time slipped. This time he's dead on the inside. On to turn seven, he makes it through fine. Remember Rusty Wallace making a mistake here earlier, turn seven. Smoking the tires. Well, Jeff Gordon drives in there hard. Oh, it really closes up now. They've got the yeses to go. Let's see what happens. Gordon tried to go to the inside. Couldn't make it happen. His last shot to pass will be down into turn 11. Mark Martin trying to break a 42-race winless streak. His last victory was at Charlotte in October of 1995. He didn't win a race all during 96. Here they come up through the yeses now. Turn 10, and they're headed for for that final opportunity. The best passing place is coming up. Jeff Gordon closes right in. He looks like he may try to go to the outside and pass Mark Martin. He's not going to do it, though, and he gets sideways coming off the corner, and that allows Mark Martin to take the checkered flag and win the Save Mark Supermarkets 300. And congratulations to Mark. The drought is over. Did you see him just lay his head over and say, thank God. Look at this finish. Ernie Urban and Ted Musgrave, several cars, Michael Walter fall there battling for position, and Musgrave barely, I think Musgrave ran out of gas coming off the last corner, Ned. Oh. And Bill Weber is with Steve Meal. Well, the water's flying around down here because Mark Martin's drought is over. Steve Meal, congratulations. Yeah, well, it's been a long time coming. We were feeling real bad about not being in the wind and for not winning. They told us we were going to be in it anyway because we won a while ago or something, but we wanted to win this race so we could get into Winston like you're supposed to. And uh, they talk about me being a real master strategist and all, but that last time when we stayed out, that wasn't Jimmy Finney, that wasn't Steve Mill. Jack Roush made that call. Obviously, Mark's been somewhat frustrated through this string. Today, he drove a great Mark Martin race. Well, Mark Martin's a great race car driver, and all we've had to do is put a good car under him. He wins in Iraq. He's won the 24 Hours Daytona. He wins all those Bush races. All we had to do was get the car comfortable for him, and we were good at Texas and blew up. We were we came from the backstretch and run fourth at Bristol. We came from the backstretch and finished third at Martinsville. We've been coming. We'd like to think we're going to be on a roll now, but it's a, it's a pleasure to work with these guys. Jimmy does a terrific job with the six car. The 16 ran great. The 99 was in good shape. All Jack's car has been real good, and we're happy we're going to Talladega next week and try again. Victory lane's that way. Go find it. Steve Meal's on his way, and so is the rest of the six bunch as Mark Martin snaps the drought and wins at Sears Point. And it's his 19th career NASCAR Winston Cup victory, and he's saluted by the driver and the fans as he's on his cool-down lap. We'll be back in a moment. Well, the smile is on his face even now, and he isn't a victory lane yet. It's a long way around here at reduced speed, but Mark Martin has finally found his way to victory lane. This is for the 19th time in his NASCAR Winston Cup career, and as we said, the long drought is over. <laughs> There's two relieved people. Yes. <laughs> he knew it was a matter of Three relieved people. Jack Roush. <laughs> Long time no see. Well, we've talked to him many times in Victory Lane uh, in the Bush Series in the last year and a half, but not in NASCAR Winston Cup. Here he is, though. <laughs> Here's our McDonald's Winner's Circle interview with Dr. Jerry Punch. Well, the celebration will begin here right now and probably last for a couple of days at least, and well-deservedly so. Mark, the drought is over. Congratulations. I ask them, did we win? <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Arlene, Matt, I love you. I wish you were here. It's a great day for Jack Roush and Steve Meal. 
Jimmy Finning's first Winston Cup win. All these guys have been so much behind us, and Valvoline and Cummins finally got something to brag about. Goodyear had a great tire today, and Bugles and Bosch and all our supporters, Ford, we needed a win bad. We talked to Steve Mill. He said, you know, we know one thing's for sure. With two laps to go, Mark's going to guard that inside groove in turn six. You can believe that. Uh, we weren't awesome today. It looked like we dominated. But Rusty had something for us. And I didn't think Jeff Gordon did, but, you know, that kid's tough, man. He mustered something for the last lap. I knew he was. I knew he, was, I knew he didn't have much, but I knew he'd take a run at us on the last lap. And it's going to be hard to pass me. <laughs> okay, 19 months ago, the last win. Enjoy this one, my friend. You earned it. Thank you. I, I can't believe it. Well, the celebration will begin for Mark Martin, 19th career win. And believe me, emotions behind those sunglasses, there are very, very moist eyes. Let's go to Bill Weber with the second place finisher. And Jeff Gordon is here at the gas pumps cooling off a little bit. And what did you say? You didn't have a chance to catch him, but what? Uh, I don't remember exactly what I said, but I thought I'd just make it look like I did. <laughs> but you were better on long runs. You know, we were real good on long runs, and we knew that yesterday in practice. And, uh, you know, the first set of tires got loose on us, and that hurt us all day long. We had to fight back. There were very few cautions. But there at the end, you know, hey, the car is pretty good. I could stay with him. I just tried to put the pressure to him and, and hope that he'd make a mistake. But Mark's smooth. He's good. And, uh, you know, he didn't make any mistakes. Not any that, that will let me get by him anyway. Well, obviously, uh, overall, a great day for you, though. We talked before the race. You'd like to get that win, but this is another good, solid finish for you. It snaps your streak of two in a row, though. Well, this is a great run for us. Uh, I tell you what, uh, the DuPont Automotive finish of Chevrolet was awesome today. Uh, the guys in the pits did an excellent job. I mean, this was a, a complete day. We just came up one short, but we're getting one spot closer to that road course win, and we'll go after him in Watkins Glen. Okay, and we'll see you at Talladega next week. Okay, we'll see you there. That's Jeff Gordon. He finishes second. So, Mark Martin wins, Jeff Gordon second, Terry Labonte, Dale Jarrett, and Daryl Waltrip complete the top five. And we will be back to Sears Point in a moment to wrap it up. ESPN Speed World coverage of the Save Mart Supermarkets 300 from Sears Point Raceway, Sonoma, California. Being brought to you by Daytona USA, the ultimate motorsports attraction. By Pennzoil, formulated for today's stop-and-go driving. Stop. Go. Pennzoil. And by Team Monte Carlo. Chevy, the car's more champions trust. Let's take a look at the unofficial results here this afternoon. Mark Martin wins the race and collects the five bonus points for leading the most laps. Gordon is second, then Labonte, Jarrett, and Daryl Waltrip. Brad Bodine, Mike Waltrip, Ernie Irving, Jeff Burton, Ward Burton, and Ted Musgrave, I think, lost about three spots on that last lap. You see Kyle Petty there in 13th, Jamie Spencer, and Wally Dahlenbach came home in 15th place. 16 through 30 included uh, Mike Skinner, Steve Grissom. Now, 26 cars finished on the lead lap. Jeremy Mayfield, the first car not on the lead lap, finishes in 27th position. And the attrition wasn't all that bad here this afternoon. Gunselman, Rusty, Rust, Robbie Gordon, Cooper, Bradbury, and Bodine did not finish the race. There are the points. Mark Martin with the victory picked up one spot into fourth position. Bobby Labonte back to fifth. Burton, Earnhardt, Ward Burton, Bobby Hamilton, and Ricky Rudd complete the top ten. Next Saturday at 1 o'clock Eastern Time on the Deuce, it's NASCAR Today, followed by our live flag-to-flag coverage of the Winston 500 from Talladega Super Speedway at 1.30 Eastern Time here on ESPN. Sports Center is coming up next here on ESPN with all the results from the world of sports on this Sunday afternoon. The drought is over for Mark Martin. He wins this race here this afternoon. I'm Bob Jenkins. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.